Chapter 2501 Three Emperor Manifestation Those three figures in Dongfang Yuyang's manifestation were the Stone Emperor, the Blood Emperor, and the Peng Emperor. Dongfang Yuyang had endured and concealed his power for so long just to steal the inheritance of these three figures. This ability was truly terrifying. Were Heaven Caesars truly capable of stealing the good fortune of Heaven and Earth? Having displayed his manifestation, Dongfang Yuyang's aura instantly transformed. The might of an emperor erupted, and the heaven-devouring black armor cores was blasted to bits just from this pressure. I now have the protection of three emperors. The inheritance of an emperor can only display its full potential in my hands. Di Feng was just an idiot who thought himself clever. He thought that copulating with Shu Aluacha would allow him to obtain the complete inheritance of the blood emperor. He had no idea that the inheritance of an emperor requires taking it from the heavenly deos as well. He took it from the human Tao but never received the recognition of the heavenly deos. In his hands, the inheritance of the blood emperor was completely wasted. Only I am qualified to possess this inheritance, because only I am capable of unleashing the true glory of the emperor's inheritances. Long Chen, I wasn't planning on killing you this early, but you're too dangerous. You know too much, so I have no choice but to kill you. Dongfang Yuyang's eyes sparkled with three different colors, appearing strange and frightening. Long Chen shook his head. Don't you think you're being too short-sighted? If I were you, I would have continued enduring. If you had, then Mo Nian and I would have probably killed Di Feng here. Since you were too impatient to wait for that, there are only two possibilities. One is that you lost patience and were willing to expose yourself to kill him due to this impatience. The other is that after killing him, you are no longer afraid of exposing your identity as a heaven Caesar, meaning that you believe you no longer have a match in this world. You're no longer afraid of the trial of the martial heaven continent. Ha ha ha. Dongfang Yuyang laughed. You're right. I'm no longer afraid of anyone. Even someone above the Nether Passage realm cannot kill me. So who cares? Long Chen, you're quite smart, but there's actually another reason why I took the risk of killing Di Feng here that you haven't guessed. Oh? I'm interested in hearing what it is, said Long Chen. It's because of you, me. Dong Fang Yuyang's gaze was icy. Yes, you. I don't want to allow you to live another day in this world. Every day that you're alive pains me. From the moment I saw you, I detested you. You're just a frog at the bottom of a well. Your background cannot compare to me and neither can your true power. In terms of looks, I far surpass you. A person like you is only there to show off just how incredible I am in comparison. I cannot understand why those people would like you and not give me a second glance. Dongfang Yuyang's face twisted with rancor. It was as if he felt that his gaze would be enough to poison someone to death. That was an immense level of hatred. Long Chen was startled, not understanding immediately. It was Mo Nian who slapped his leg and laughed. This idiot. So you are just jealous of his beauties? Ha ha ha. What a joke. What is there to laugh at? Dongfang Yuyang roared. Four voices intertwined into one and shook Mo Nian's ears, making him jump. Dongfang Yuyang pointed at Long Chen sinisterly. Who do you think you are in my era? What woman wasn't infatuated with me? With no exception, they wished to be with me. So how did an oaf like you end up with the favor of so many beautiful women? Yi Lingxian is like that. Nangong Zuyu is like that. Bidang Rushuang is like that. Even the Zither Fairy and the Pill Fairy only have eyes for you. Are they all blind? Jealousy was truly a powerful poison. It had no cure. The more arrogant someone was, the stronger this poison was. Dongfang Yuyang looked as if even tearing Long Chen to pieces wouldn't be enough to satisfy the hatred in his heart. Dongfang Yuyang appeared to be a perfect man in other people's eyes. In his view, women should be infatuated with such a man. In his era, he was the strongest expert, with the strongest talent and the strongest background. However, background, talent, power, none of those were what Dongfang Yuyang was proudest of. No, his most conceited area was his looks that he felt could infatuate any woman. Seeing their worshipful gazes made him feel even more accomplished than advancing his cultivation base or defeating powerful enemies. It was what he lived for. Dongfang Yuyang had always lived alone, refusing to be with any woman. What he enjoyed was not one person, 
but the feeling of being worshipped by countless people. He enjoyed being a flawless image in other people's hearts that they dreamed of. In his era, he was the figure that women dreamed of obtaining, a thorn in the side of all men. He very much enjoyed that feeling, the worship of women and the envy of men. That was the meaning of his existence. Even his cultivation was second compared to that. After being sealed and woken in this age, Dongfang Yuyang was prepared to once more do the same to the new era of people. Just as he thought he would be the number one perfect man of the martial heaven continent, he encountered Long Chen. He was like a mountain in the face of a breeze, blocking him completely. When Dongfang Yuyang had invited Yi Lingxian to come to the gathering, her eyes had clearly brightened. However, that was not the look of worship that he sought. Furthermore, when she looked at Long Chen, her gaze was always so warm. At that time, Dongfang Yuyang had felt dislike for Long Chen, but he hadn't known whether it was because of Yi Lingxian or because of Long Chen himself. Also, he was someone with great endurance and never exposed these feelings for others to see. He even invited Long Chen to embarrass him during the gathering. As a result, at the gathering, Nangong Zuayu and Bidang Rushuang had both ended up becoming friendly with Long Chen as soon as they met. They were even joking and laughing. As for when the two of them spoke to Dongfang Yuyang, they were clearly simply maintaining a respectful courtesy. But being with Long Chen, they were relaxed and at ease. That was unacceptable to him. To be the focus of everyone was the area he was most confident in. Having Long Chen take the spotlight away from him was torture. He had then urged the sea demon race to target Long Chen, not expecting that this would result in the sea demon race coming to beat him up. At that time, he had felt like he might go crazy. He had almost been unable to resist exposing his true power and slaughtering those sea demons. In the end, the head of the Dongfang family had ordered him to endure. Starting then, Dongfang Yuyang started to fade from people's sight. He hadn't even dared to leave the house because he knew he had become the laughing stock of the continent. He had fallen from the ranks of the top experts. Those days had been even worse torture than before. He hated Long Chen. He hated that he was unable to extricate himself from this position. Through his efforts, he had finally managed to obtain Di Feng's trust, using Long Chen and Mo Nian to scheme against Di Feng. Today, he decided to no longer endure this torture anymore and he felt like he really would go insane. Long Chen and Mo Nian were both completely shocked. They had never expected that the reason Dongfang Yuyang hated Long Chen so much was just because of his relationships with women. This reason was truly unexpected. If others had said such a thing, it would simply be treated as a joke. But the way that Dongfang Yuyang looked right now, it seemed he wasn't acting. Furthermore, he had no reason to joke about this. Do you see? Long Chen, you've taken in too many women, the heavens are enraged, as are other people, to tell the truth, if our relationship wasn't so good, I would join hands with him to kill you, said Mo Nian, are you planning on changing sides right before the battle asked Long Chen, that depends on how many benefits he can give me, if they're big, then, it will be a difficult choice, said Mo Nian helplessly, shut up, Dongfang Yuyang roared. Long Chen and Mo Nian were both laughing and joking at his expense. The shock they had displayed after learning that it was due to this reason that he had finally lost his patience and could no longer endure was particularly infuriating. It was as if the two of them felt this to be an incredibly childish and laughable reason. That made him feel even worse. It was a wordless insult. Boom. Dongfang Yuyang's manifestation suddenly shook, and he slammed his hands on the earth causing the land to begin rising violently. Long Chen and Mo Nian immediately rose into the air. They saw the earth split open, and giant stalagmites shot into the air. The spaces between the stalagmites were covered by a strange law, which made Long Chen and Mo Nian unable to avoid them. This large area attack could only be received directly. Long Chen, I'll leave this brute power work to you. I'll provide support. Mo Nian immediately fell back. A clash of brute power was not his specialty. The Stone Emperor's power? Let me experience it. Long Chen snorted. Dragon scales covered his body, and an azure dragon swam within his scales. A wild dragon might filled heaven and earth as he unleashed a punch. Chapter 2502 The Power of a Heaven Caesar Boom. With one fist, 
Dozens of stalagmites crumbled. Long Chen had fully recovered. Just as he smashed the closest stalagmites, the surrounding ones collapsed on him like a mountain, swallowing him whole. It was like he was caught in countless stone mountains that had linked into a formation. As soon as he tried to charge through, they changed shape quickly, preventing him from escaping. There was now a giant stone sphere trapping Long Chen. It was rapidly compressing him. This wide-range attack was capable of trapping and killing. Its range made it practically impossible to dodge. However, boom. Just as the stone sphere was rapidly compressing, it suddenly exploded. A dragon roar rang out as Long Chen appeared within its shattered remnants. Long Chen kicked one of the broken fragments at Dong Fang Yuyang, sending it at him like a shooting star. Dong Fang Yuyang snorted and extended a hand. The stone stopped, and like a magnet, it drew all the fragments back toward it. Just at that moment, Long Chen was already charging over. Dong Fang Yuyang sent the giant stone sphere back at Long Chen. Boom. Long Chen smashed straight through the stone and threw a fist at Dong Fang Yuyang. This caught Dong Fang Yuyang off guard. He had expected this attack to force Long Chen back and had been in the midst of preparing another attack. However, Long Chen passed through the stone like it was tofu, and that made Dong Fang Yuyang hastily give up on his hand seals. Stone gloves appeared on his hands, and a pair of feathered wings manifested on his back. Boom. Long Chen's fist landed right on Dong Fang Yuyang's arms. As a result, the stone armor protecting him instantly shattered, and he flew back. His wings shook as they dissipated Long Chen's attack power. He was already far into the distance before managing to shake off Long Chen's attack. The pen races wings. Mo Nian's heart shook. Heaven Caesars were truly bizarre existences. He was even able to take the inherited divine abilities of divine races. Dong Fang Yuyang clenched his fists. Sharp pain came from his arms. Although the stone armor had protected him, and his pen wings had helped dissipate some of the power, the bones in his arms had cracked. Dong Fang Yuyang was startled by Long Chen's power. He had endured all this time and stealthily stolen the manifestations of Shai Lingfeng and Kun Pengzi. He had fused them perfectly and thought that he would be able to easily crush Long Chen. He had not expected that even as his power rose crazily, Long Chen's power would also have followed. This is the power of the Stone Emperor? How disappointing. I don't know if the Stone Emperor himself was always so weak, or if you only inherited a hair of his power. Did you think this bit of power would be enough to carry out your vendetta against me? Aren't you too naive? Your stone energy is lacking by more than just a bit compared to Jarishan's metal energy. If this is all you have, I'm afraid you're going to die here, said Long Chen indifferently. Long Chen, don't get cocky. This is just the start. A warm-up sneered Dong Fang Yuyang. Dong Fang Yuyang formed hand seals, and stone giants came out of the ground, attacking Long Chen. No, he's not trying to kill us. He's stalling. Mo Nian, what's going on? Long Chen suddenly sensed something off. These stone giants might be powerful, but they were unable to cause him any fatal injuries. Dong Fang Yuyang should be well aware of this by now. I don't know either. I only got out one step before you. As soon as I came out, I encountered these two guarding this place. Dong Fang Yuyang's sneak attack injured me. Before I could land a blow back, you arrived, said Mo Nian. You didn't see Yan Tian and the others, asked Long Chen, his heart sinking. No, then that's bad. Yan Tian is in danger. Jarishan, Feng Fei, Yu Qingxuan, and Yi Ming are definitely after him, said Long Chen. Just who is Yan Tian? Why do they want him dead? Asked Mo Nian. He had been holding back this question for a long time now. He is Sovereign Yan Shang's son. He is a true sovereign sprout, said Long Chen. There was no longer any need to keep this a secret. Yan Shian's identity would quickly be exposed. So that's why. Mo Nian suddenly realized why. Jarishan and Feng Fei were sovereign sprouts, while Yan Tian was a sovereign's son. He definitely had a high chance of becoming a sovereign in the future. There could only be one sovereign born on the Martial Heaven continent in any generation. If Yan Tian became a sovereign, they would never have a chance. So they were targeting him. Prepare yourself. Make sure to follow me. We'll get rid of him right now. 
Long Chen sent a message to Mo Nian and began to blast the stone giants apart. As expected, they weren't strong enough to stop him. However, after being destroyed, they quickly reformed, being a constant hindrance. With a cold snort, Long Chen stamped down on the ground. Thunder boomed as he shot out like a bolt of lightning, arriving in front of Dong Fang Yuyang in an instant despite the stone giants. A lightning spear unleashed blinding light as it stabbed toward Dong Fang Yuyang. Boom! A blood colored runic sword appeared in Dong Fang Yuyang's hand. This sword contained Di Feng's aura in it, so this was an attack containing the Blood Emperor's power. His sword slashed into the lightning spear, and both weapons exploded. Dong Fang Yuyang once more retreated. However, just at this moment, his expression changed. When the blinding lightning was gone, he found himself within a giant raging flame prison. Dong Fang Yuyang let out a roar, causing two figures within his manifestation to attack at the same time. As he formed hand seals, two rays of divine light shot out of his manifestation. The flame prison instantly exploded, having yet to grow fully stabilized. Dong Fang Yuyang was well aware of how tough Long Chen's flame prison was, so he shattered it in an instant before it could fully seal him. As the flame prison exploded, a black saber slashed down like a black river of stars. Dong Fang Yuyang was startled, realizing that the lightning spear was bait to make him think that the flame prison was the killing move, when in reality, the killing move was coming now. Split the Heavens 8, Stone Emperor Shield. Peng Void Barrier Lightning Wings appeared on Dong Fang Yuyang's back. He rapidly retreated. A thick stone shield also appeared in front of him like a tortoise shell that was covered with blood-colored runes. At the same time, he was wrapped by a thick layer of runes. Those runes had the shape of feathers and layered themselves in front of him. In less than a tenth of a blink of an eye, Dong Fang Yuyang succeeded in summoning two powerful defenses. It went without saying that his reaction speed was incredible. Long Chen's saber fell, slicing through the stone shield easily as if it was tofu. A large cut was also made in the feather barrier, and Evil Moon landed on Dong Fang Yuyang's body. Dong Fang Yuyang didn't even have a chance to take out his divine weapon before Long Chen's blow created a long cut on his body. His blood sprayed out. At the same time, a silent arrow struck him in the back of the head and pierced straight through. This was Mo Nian's fatal killing blow. However, curiously, while Long Chen managed to get a spray of blood with his saber, Mo Nian's arrow passed through his head without any blood. Dong Fang Yuyang's wings flapped, and he shot away while crushing something in his hand. Not good. Long Chen raised his hand, unleashing a bolt of lightning at Dong Fang Yuyang. However, his attack passed right through him. Dong Fang Yuyang's body slowly faded. Fuck. How did he get away? Raged Mo Nian. He was extremely unwilling to let Dong Fang Yuyang off just like this. He's very difficult to deal with. Although he summoned three emperors in his manifestation, in reality, he was only able to fully control the power of the Stone Emperor and the Peng Emperor. He only just absorbed the energy of the Blood Emperor and has yet to fully merge with it. He's only able to control a fraction of its power. Just now. He used a bit of the Blood Emperor's ability to escape us, said Long Chen. Although he greatly detested Dong Fang Yuyang, he had no choice but to admit that a Heaven Caesar was truly difficult to deal with. This ability to steal other people's inheritances was heaven defying. How could there be such a person in this world? Dong Fang Yuyang was already powerful, but once he merged with the Blood Emperor's inheritance, he would be unstoppable. Perhaps this was why he was no longer worried about being exposed. Perhaps he even had the confidence to ignore the martial heaven continent's haunt. How regretful. Just now, I could've. It's fine. There won't be just one chance. He'll come out again. Let's go save Yun Tian, said Long Chen. How are we supposed to find him? They probably got off the ship before us. We'll follow the direction the ghost ship came from. There definitely should be a trail if so many of them are attacking him. Long Chen pointed, and the two of them flew off in the direction that the ghost ship had come from. Chapter 2503 Corpse Devouring Armored Spider I've found them, shouted Mo Nian. By retracing the path of the ghost ship and traveling through the endless black armor cores, killing an unknown number of them, after two hours, they finally found their tracks. 
This place was a barren land, with multiple powerful auras still hanging in the air. The black armor cores didn't even dare to approach this place. The aura of these flames belongs to the pill fairy. There's also Jarishan's metal energy and spiritual pressure belonging to Feng Fei. This gorge was created by Yi Ming's jagged sword. It's filled with an aura of death and decay. There are also signs of some other attacks that came from unknown people, but they weren't from Yantian. Why are so many of them attacking him at the same time? Is becoming a sovereign really so important? Even more important than the safety of the Martial Heaven continent? They've already forgotten that without the sovereigns, the continent would have fallen into oblivion, and they would already be dead. Long Chen clenched a handful of black dirt angrily. Although Yun Tian had not publicly stated his identity, just his mannerism said everything. For Feng Fei, Jarishan, and the others to join forces to attack him, they were clearly after the position of sovereign. They felt that with Yun Tian present, none of them could become a sovereign, so he had to be eliminated first. As for Long Chen, he had never thought of becoming a sovereign, he just hoped to live happily. If someone else was capable of leading the Martial Heaven Continent to peace, he would be willing to follow them. However, Jarishan, Feng Fei, and the others had clearly forgotten to be grateful to the sovereigns. They were actually joining forces against a sovereign's descendant. That made Long Chen's killing intent blaze. Perhaps what they wish for is not peace. In their eyes, only becoming a sovereign is important. In war, although countless people die on the battlefield, that's just a drop in the ocean compared to the defenseless commoners who die. Greed is the original sin. No tricks are out of the question. Other people's lives or deaths don't matter. Perhaps Jarishan and Feng Fei's thoughts are the thoughts of the divine families. They want to rule this world. Even if this world is a war-stricken battlefield of death. Sighed Mo Nian. Mo Nian patted Long Chen on the shoulder. Brother, we both don't have such aspirations. But now you've seen reality. If you don't fight for this, others will kill you. You want to protect your people, but others don't want to allow you to do so. The Martial Heaven Continent is in chaos, and the Divine Family's attitude is still ambiguous. They will sooner or later reveal their fangs. I don't believe that they're so kind-hearted as to silently pay for the Continent's peace. They have their own glorious history, and it is said that they previously assisted the Sovereigns in battle. However, that is not recorded in history, and the past sovereigns have never said anything about the divine families. This matter is a complete mystery. The divine families are like leopards watching their prey. When their opportunity ripens, they will pounce. Mo Nian had no good feelings toward the divine families, but since Long Chen had a collaborative relationship with the Long family of the divine families, there were some words that he hadn't said to him. Now, Mo Nian could no longer hold back. For Jarishan and Feng Fei to not hesitate to attack Yan Tian, there had to be some unspeakable secret behind it. I understand. Let's go, said Long Chen. You've thought it through? If Yan Tian is being attacked, will you be capable of unleashing killing blows? Demanded Mo Nian. I've thought it through. Even against you, Kingsuan, I won't have mercy. Enemies are enemies. To be entangled by emotions toward enemies is folly. Long Chen took a deep breath. All right then. Mo Nian nodded. If Long Chen was going to go so far, then he was at ease. Otherwise, if Long Chen had his hands tied against Yu Kingsuan once they caught up, they would be sending themselves to their deaths. The two of them chased down the tracks. Mo Nian suddenly said, Strange. Why are these marks so off? Is Yun Tian simply being attacked without striking back? They had yet to see a single mark from Yun Tian. It was as if he was incapable of attacking. There's blood. Long Chen suddenly pointed to a drop of blood. It has the aura of darkness. It's Yi Ming's blood. Yi Ming was in possession of dark energy. His blood was easy to distinguish. Then does that mean that Yun Tian is only attacking Yi Ming? Why? Asked Mo Nian. Yun Tian was being attacked by four peak experts. Theoretically, he should be trying to break free from their siege. After all, all four of them were peerless geniuses. To run was normal. Yi Ming definitely has some sinister scheme. That's why Yun Tian has no choice but to kill him. It seems it isn't the four of them attacking Yun Tian, but Yun Tian hunting down Yi Ming with the other three helping Yi Ming. 
Yi Ming is fleeing as he fights off Yan Tian. That's why these battle scars are so strange. Hypothesized Long Chen. No way. Yan Tian is so powerful. Mo Nian was gobsmacked. Long Chen's heart shook. Yes, Yan Tian was truly powerful. However, if he was capable of hunting down Yi Ming while dealing with those three people's attacks, that was hard to believe. Maybe it has something to do with the Dragon King Essence Blood and Sovereign Yan Chang Long Chen could only come up with another guess. Sovereign Yan Chang had left Yan Tian the Dragon King Essence Blood, as well as indicated a path for him to walk on the ghost ship. Yan Tian had to have his own lucky encounters. The two of them continued following the tracks, but the more they saw, the more off they felt things to be. At some point, the sky had started to turn dark. The void was twisting and the aura of decay and death grew stronger. This place is like a cemetery. The smell is a bit familiar. Mo Nian touched his nose suspiciously, but looking at the scars on the ground, it didn't seem like they had gotten off track. Suddenly, the ground beneath their feet exploded. One giant black monster after another crawled out of the ground. They had the bodies of spiders with eight long legs. Their mouths were extremely sharp like the mouthpieces of mosquitoes and their bodies were as big as calves. These are corpse-devouring armored spiders. How did they grow so big? exclaimed Mo Nian. As an expert archaeologist specialized in digging up ancient tombs, he was knowledgeable about all things fond of living in tombs. The corpse-devouring armored spider was one of the most frightening life forms to live in tombs. Their food was the liquid within corpses. They also preferred the corpses of powerful life forms. Ordinary corpses were unappealing to them. The bodies of most cultivators remained preserved for many years. Normally, it took hundreds or even over a thousand years before it rotted. When it rotted, the flesh would undergo a transformation with the blood, and this new liquid was essentially poison. But it was what the corpse-devouring armored spiders lived off of. Their mouthpieces were exceptionally terrifying. They were like drills capable of easily piercing the toughest formations and coffins to consume the corpses within. As a result, the tombs of some famous sects and families always had people guarding them, just to guard against these creatures' entry. Once they entered, they would not just consume the corpses, they would lay eggs within the corpses before those ancestral remains were consumed. Mo Nian was familiar with them, and as a result, he was exceptionally shocked. That was because the corpse-devouring armored spiders that he had seen before were all only the size of a palm. He had never seen one this big. Be careful. If you're bitten by one of these things, it can poison you to death. Mo Nian had barely finished warning Long Chen when one of the spiders pounced on him. Mo Nian shot an arrow that got stuck in its head. It didn't pierce all the way through. Sparks flew when the arrow pierced into its head, as if its head was made of metal. Mo Nian's arrows were easily capable of piercing mountains, yet it was unable to pierce its head. How are they so powerful? exclaimed Long Chen and Mo Nian at the same time. Mo Nian suddenly realized that Long Chen was talking to him, as if he knew. He shouted, The corpse devouring armored spiders that I've seen are all only the size of a fist. They're like grandbabies compared to these. After Mo Nian killed the first one, the rest of the spiders charged toward the two of them. They were jumping about in the sky, their sharp mouthpieces flickering with a cold light. Mo Nian repeatedly pulled on his bowstring, unleashing waves of divine light that sent them flying. He managed to create a free space for the two of them. When did you learn to play the bowstring? Long Chen was surprised. Mo Nian had actually gained such a skill. Ha! I, Mo Nian, am a master of all skills. Fuck. Now isn't the time. Think of a way to get rid of them, shouted Mo Nian. You're the expert in these things. You think of a way. Long Chen pushed the responsibility onto Mo Nian. As Mo Nian plucked his bowstring, he said, These things have toxins in their mouthpieces, and their armor is their defense. They have a strong life force with a crystal core and an Eden. Destroying one will not cause the other to immediately die. If we want them dead, they have to be completely crushed. They aren't magical beasts or demonic beasts. I don't know how to classify them. That's all I know. So you think of something. Shockingly, more and more corpse-devouring armored spiders appeared in their surroundings. It was unknown where they were coming from, but they were endless. 
Long Chen unleashed a slash of his saber, killing a dozen of them in a line, but the rest were simply knocked back, not killed. Their armor was tough, and their size was small enough that his attacks were unable to unleash their full power. It was like his attack had landed on cotton, causing the cotton to merely split but not break. Fuck, this is definitely something Yi Ming left behind to block us. Long Chen formed hand seals, and flames began to fill the world. Raging flames incinerate the heavens. Chapter 2504 The world's number one handsome man A sea of flames spread, instantly igniting the corpse devouring armored spiders. However, there seemed to be another layer of energy around them, blocking a portion of the flames. Even once they were set on fire, it was a very slow process. It seemed that they didn't fear these flames much. Even within the sea of flames, they continued to charge forward, completely unafraid of death. They have powerful earth element energy within them. Fire isn't a good counter to them, said Mo Nian. Long Chen pointed his finger. Flame arrows shot out, piercing a few of their bodies. Those few corpse devouring armored spiders fell from the sky. Long Chen cut through one of them and saw that their armor was only three inches thick. What curious life forms. Long Chen was surprised that this armor was able to block most of his flame energy. However, while their bodies resisted the flames, they were still impacted, so his flame arrows were able to kill them. Even though they were dead, they didn't immediately burn to a crisp. Instead, they slowly shrank. Upon reaching the size of a fist and completely deforming, they suddenly transformed into ash. What a powerful life force. Long Chen was surprised. Even when dead. They had immense life energy that resisted his flames. It was only once their life force was exhausted that they turned to ash. He suddenly had a thought and began tossing the dead corpse devouring armored spiders into the primal chaos space's black soil. As expected, upon being devoured by the black soil, they quickly released a huge amount of life energy. What Long Chen didn't know was that these corpse devouring armored spiders were an ancient breed that fed on the essence of corpses. They had stored up an astonishing amount of life energy within their bodies. They had long lifespans, with the potential to grow for tens of thousands of years. It could be said that they had no natural predators. Furthermore, due to only devouring corpses, they did not break the balance of the world and were not hunted. According to Mo Nian, these corpse devouring armored spiders would only attack people if someone barged into their territory while eating. Mo Nian could not figure out why this place would have so many of them. Furthermore, people had clearly already fought here, but they hadn't attacked them. Why would they attack the two of them Novaloon.com within the flames? Their defenses dropped, allowing Mo Nian to tear through lines of them with his arrows. Furthermore, with every slash of Evil Moon, Long Chen blasted a wave of them apart. He quickly gathered their corpses up at the same time. Mo Nian asked. What are you gathering their corpses for? Poison pills. How could I have time for that? I have another use for them, said Long Chen. As more and more of them entered the black soil, the heavenly kilin demon trees quickly grew. Although his flames were unable to directly burn them to death, it weakened them to the point that killing them became relatively easy. There were now so many of their corpses piled up into mountains that Long Chen was incredibly busy trying to gather them all. This continued for two hours. Long Chen estimated that the two of them had killed millions of them by now. Those corpses were tossed into the primal chaos space. The 300 heavenly killin demon trees had doubled in size. Their growth was truly slow. It took an enormous amount of life energy to make them grow. But they didn't disappoint him. With every inch they grew, they stored more life energy for him to tap into. At this point. Just these 300 heavenly killin demon trees had managed to surpass the entire forest of fully matured world trees that he had planted before. The heavenly killin demon trees were only 60 meters tall now. They were essentially saplings when compared to a towering fully matured heavenly killin demon tree. Once they were fully mature, there would be no way to estimate their energy. At this time, Mo Nian came flying back from outside the Sea of Flames. He had gone to take a look at their situation, but he had been forced back. The Sea of Flames had a limit. Beyond this flame domain, the corpse devouring armored spiders were incredibly powerful. Hence, Mo Nian didn't dare to charge into their midst. How is it? asked Long Chen. Fuck, 
We are completely surrounded by a sea of spiders. My divine sense is cut off at that point. But based on what I saw, this entire world is full of corpse devouring armored spiders. There's no way to see the end, said Mo Nian. They were essentially endless. Long Chen's giant flame domain was essentially an island within a sea. Continuing like this is no solution. This is definitely Yi Ming's trap to block us from saving Yan Tian. I say we should take the risk and try charging through, said Mo Nian. You just said that this is Yi Ming's trap. Did you consider that it might be a double-layered trap? Asked Long Chen. What do you mean? If we use our full power to charge through the sea of spiders, who knows how much energy it will waste? If at that time, Yi Ming, Jarishan, and the others were waiting for us, what would we do? A. Then consider an even worse situation, where upon charging out of the sea of spiders, we end up in a sea of beasts or worse. We can't just act according to how Yi Ming expects us to, said Long Chen. Then what are we supposed to do? Just wait. Mo Nian frowned. Yup. Just wait. Our reinforcements are coming. Reinforcements? What reinforcements? Your dragon blood legion. Long Chen smiled. I already sent out the call for reinforcements. They'll get here quickly. Are you not worried about Yi Ming scheming against them? Nope. First of all. He didn't have the time to do such a thing. Furthermore, dealing with the Dragon Blood Legion would require at least two peak experts. If they did that, it would be a joke. Yan Tian would easily be able to kill them if they tried that, said Long Chen. You're so confident? I don't want to insult you, but as long as they send out a single Jarishan, they can block your Dragon Blood Legion, said Mo Nian. Do you think the current Dragon Blood Legion is still the old Dragon Blood Legion? If Jarishan goes out on his own, I guarantee he'll never be able to follow through with his name again, laughed Long Chen. The two of them continued to kill the corpse devouring armored spiders without exhausting themselves. Suddenly, Long Chen began to flick his finger. One small flame lotus after another shot out. Despite their miniature size, when they exploded, they slaughtered the corpse devouring armored spiders within a giant region. Damn, what is that? Did you learn it on the ghost ship? Asked Mo Nian. Those were miniature world extermination flame lotuses. Mo Nian had seen Long Chen use this technique before. But even then, their power was not much greater than the miniature ones that he was shooting out. Most shocking of all was that Long Chen was shooting them out easily without accumulating any energy. These miniature world extermination flame lotuses were capable of killing fourth step nether passage experts easily. Speak up. What did you obtain on the ghost ship? Asked Long Chen. He, it's a secret. I'll tell you later. I want to enjoy the sight of your shocked expression at the time. Snickered Mo Nian. Wretch, your uncle. My only uncle is your uncle. I'll tell him that you called him a wretch. Since Mo Nian refused to tell him what he had gained, he naturally wasn't in a position to inquire what Long Chen had obtained. As for the matter of the sovereign, Long Chen didn't want to mention it for fear of bringing more karma upon Mo Nian. As time passed, no matter how many they killed, more and more corpse devouring armored spiders appeared. After a while, Mo Nian jumped out to take a look, only to see that there was still no end to them. Furthermore, as they killed more and more, the newcomers were slightly different. Their mouth perts were golden, and some of them even had wings. Those ones were quick as lightning. Mo Nian was almost bitten by one. It would cause unimaginable pain and slow down a person's reactions, which could be fatal here. However, the two of them continued to maintain a steady attack rate, making sure to stay in their peak condition for fear of someone launching a sneak attack. After six whole hours, Long Chen had gathered countless corpses. The heavenly Killin demon trees had grown to 150 meters. Long Chen could clearly sense an ocean's worth of life energy within them. That was the only gratifying thing about being trapped here. Boss, don't panic. The world's number one handsome man, the number two expert beneath the heavens, the divine armored warrior Guo Ran has come to help. Guo Ran's metallic armored voice rang from the sky. A blood-colored figure charged through the sea of spiders. Chapter 2505 Heaven Defying Karmic Luck Boom a blood-colored battle armor smashed into the ground, and a wave of blood-colored light blasted away the surrounding corpse-devouring armored spiders. 
It was truly a mighty entrance. In his new suit, Guo Ran no longer looked the same. His battle armor was now bigger and had spikes on the helmet, shoulder, and elbow. After landing on the ground, Guo Ran remained kneeling there. He had his head lowered, as if waiting for something. As expected, countless bombs began to fall from the sky, blasting apart the corpse devouring armored spiders. As the bombs fell, their corpses flew through their air. Amidst their broken fragments, Guo Ran slowly rose. With a wave of his hand, he sent one of the corpse devouring armored spiders flying. Although he was wearing armor, his movements appeared particularly natural and graceful. This poser act gets a full mark. Mo Nian raised his thumb at Guo Ran. Boom. Just at this moment, a pair of wings split the void. Cloud charged in as well, her body even larger than before. Her wings created an opening within the sea of spiders. After charging in, Cloud immediately transformed into her human form, appearing like a maiden. Ignoring the dragon blood warriors that had been on her back, she went over to hug Long Chen, big brother Long Chen. Despite being the future leader of the Xuan beasts, Cloud was still as pure-hearted as ever, and like a child in front of Long Chen. At this moment, Meng Qi, Chu Yao, Tang Wanur, Yi Zhikyu, Dong Mingyu, Lu Ruyan, and the others also walked over. They had all managed to advance to the fourth step of Nether Passage. Their auras were no longer the same. Boss, Gu Yang, Li Qi, Song Mingyuan, Yu Zifeng, Xia Chen, and the others took out their weapons, their gazes sharp. The Dragonblood warriors were unleashing a whirlwind of killing intent. During this time, they had definitely not been slacking off. They had to have endured quite a few battles for their killing intent to remain so sharp. Assemble the formation as soon as they all arrived. Xia Chen gave orders. The Dragonblood warriors instantly entered one of their battle formations, and rays of sword chi began to fly through the air killing the corpse devouring armored spiders. Damn. Did they all get completely reborn? Mo Nian was shocked. The dragonblood warriors were slaughtering the corpse devouring armored spiders easily. Although they were within Long Chen's flame domain, weakening their defenses, their attacks were incredibly sharp. Upon reaching the fourth step of Nether Passage, the dragonblood warriors were completely different from before. Long Chen, how did you get trapped here? Asked Meng Qi. It's hard to explain. You came from outside. So how many of the corpse devouring armored spiders are there? Asked Long Chen. Everything within 10 million miles has been filled with these spiders. This entire world is full of them. We also saw more of them flying over here. It seems as if the entire Starfield Divine World's corpse devouring armored spiders are being drawn over here. This place is the center. If it wasn't for Cloud's power to break the void it would have been difficult to charge through to this place. How did you get trapped here? Asked Tang Wanur. I'll explain it all later. Tell me, did you encounter any troubles after leaving the life and death spring? What about the others? Asked Long Chen. Meng Chi said, we continued to be sneak attacked a few times while advancing, but they were pretty weak. After a few of us finished our advancements, we stood guard and took turns. After completely wiping out the groups that continued to cause trouble for us, they eventually stopped. The sea demon race arrived at that time, and Gu Yang and the others spent the better part of a day fighting that fellow from the six-horned sea serpent race. However, he was too powerful, and he managed to get away. Gu Yang and the others also didn't dare to get too far from the life and death spring, so they let him go. After we all finished advancing, according to your instructions, we left without leaving anyone to guard the spring. We had Guo Ran led the way, and we discovered seven divine ore deposits, two secret abodes, and a training area that allowed the Dragonblood warriors to once more strengthen their physical bodies. We obtained five divine arts and were capable of cracking two of them. One of them is the Wind God's incantation that Tang Wanur has already started to train in. Another was an ancient text on swordplay. It was too difficult for anyone else to comprehend, so we left it to Yu Zifeng. Other than those things, we killed 9 13th rank beasts, obtained 12 of their young, 5 house pet eggs. As Men Chi explained their gains, Long Chen and Mo Nian were stunned. Mo Nian's eyes almost popped out of his head. Is this really true? How can your luck be so good? demanded Mo Nian. 
When Menchi began to take out some of the young of the beasts that they had killed, their terrifying auras made it so that Mo Nian had no choice but to believe it. Ha ha ha, it's all thanks to me. With my karmic luck, not finding all these amazing treasures would have been difficult. It just so happens I needed several of those divine materials. It allowed me to strengthen my armor again. He, although these additions are just temporary, my combat power has risen a great deal. Guo Ran smiled proudly. Guo Ran had truly taken the spotlight this time. He had led them to huge gains. There were four times when killing the 13th rank beasts that they arrived at the perfect time. One of them had just laid an egg and was extremely weak. There was another one whose lifespan had almost reached an end. As everyone else was fighting it, Guo Ran killed it in one blow. Shocking everyone. That was because at that time, Guo Ran had made additions to his armor. And while he had said that he could defeat a 13th rank beast on his own, they hadn't quite believed it until he had killed it in one blow. It was only later that they realized the beast's old age. Guo Ran's attack had just happened to exhaust the last dregs of its energy. As for the other two beasts, it was rather funny, but they had stolen them. Those beasts had been about to be killed by others when the Dragonblood Legion arrived. There had been a group of 50,000 corrupt experts attacking one 13th rank beast. They had underestimated its abilities, and thousands of them had been killed before they barely managed to give it a severe injury. Just as they had been about to settle things, the Dragonblood Legion had arrived. Upon seeing that they were from the corrupt path, the Dragonblood Legion had directly started a slaughter. The corrupt experts had tried to resist so that they could still bring the beast's corpse away with them. However, despite the beast's injured state, it was still putting up a fight. It was impossible to put it away when it wasn't dead. The corrupt experts had wanted to endure, but the Dragonblood Legion was too fierce. In just the first exchange, they scattered. In the end, over 10,000 of them were killed while the rest fled. The Dragonblood Legion obtained a huge profit. Another beast was the same. Only the victim this time was the Sea Demon race. However, they were smart and had used poison. That beast was powerful but unable to stop them from poisoning it repeatedly. In the end, it lost its ability to resist. Just as the Sea Demon race was about to reap their harvest, Guo Ran led the Dragonblood Legion over. Seeing this scene and with their previous experience, they immediately transformed into a pack of bandits, slaughtering tens of thousands of sea demons. By the time that fight was over, the beast was already poisoned to death. Hearing Guo Ran's excited explanation about all this left Long Chen and Mo Nian speechless. This karmic luck was truly monstrous. Good things were just running into his lap. Before this, Mo Nian hadn't been too much of a believer in karmic luck, but Guo Ran's ability proved it. However, in this particular case, it was far too conspicuous. Although other heavenly geniuses had good karmic luck, it definitely wasn't so heaven-defying. Menchi and the others had concluded that this luck was most likely the sum of all of their karmic luck. If one person's karmic luck could be so heaven-defying, then it would have reached the level of affecting the heavenly deos. The other possibility was perhaps that Guo Ran's power was so bad that even the heavens pitied him and blessed him with good things to make up for it. Once he was stronger, perhaps he would no longer be so blessed. Of course, when it came to karmic luck, there was no way to conclude anything precisely. They could only guess as only the heavens knew the truth. There was one thing that could be confirmed though. Here in the Starfield Divine World, Guo Ran's karmic luck was truly frightening. All right. Since we're all gathered now, let's think of a way of killing all these corpse-devouring armored spiders, said Long Chen. Thanks to their arrival, Long Chen now knew that these corpse-devouring armored spiders were coming from all over the Starfield Divine World. They hadn't mistakenly barged into their territory. In other words, no matter where they went, they would have to face the spiders' attacks. If they wanted to stop them from being a hindrance, they had to kill them all. Meng Chi. I have something good for you. Long Chen suddenly thought of the void mirror he had obtained on the ghost ship. He took out the crystalline mirror and circulated his spiritual strength. As a result, a beam of light shot through the void. It started off the size of a palm but quickly grew, blasting apart any corpse-devouring armored spiders that it touched. A large hole was then left in the void. 
That gap in the spiders allowed them to see that it really was as Meng Chi had said. The corpse-devouring armored spiders had completely surrounded this place. The gap was thousands of miles deep, but the only thing that could be seen was the corpse-devouring armored spiders. The gap was instantly filled. Mo Nian was stunned by their numbers but also by Long Chen's mirror. Its power was terrifying. What a beautiful and powerful mirror Meng Chi covered her mouth. She had already realized that this was a terrifying soul item. It's been years since I've given you a nice gift. This void mirror is something I obtained on the ghost ship. I hope you like it. Long Chen smiled and pressed it into Meng Qi's hand. Chapter 2506 Wild's terrifying power A divine treasure like this is a waste in my hands, said Meng Qi, not daring to accept. Big sister, you have to take it. You have the strongest soul energy. This void mirror is perfect for you, urged Tang Wan'er. Only then did Meng Qi take the void mirror. Its crystals emitted divine light that illuminated her already peerless looks. It felt as if this mirror had been made for her. They both set off each other's beauty. Wan'er, I have something good for you too. Long Chen took out a divine bone. What's this? It's trying to merge into my body. Tang Wan'er jumped when she touched it. The divine bone was starting to merge with her. This is a divine bone. When you merge with it, you will develop a spirit bone. It is said that the spirit root, spirit blood, and spirit bone are requirements for becoming a sovereign. If Lady Wan'er one day becomes Sovereign Wan'er, remember to look after this junior brother. Long Chen smiled. A divine bone. Everyone was shocked. An item that could create a spirit bone was a treasure on the heaven-defying level. Long Chen. I. Wan'er's hand trembled her eyes reddening. Long Chen was actually giving such a precious divine bone to her. Long Chen rubbed her head. This one is for you. You're the only one capable of using the wind attribute divine bone. When Long Chen had obtained the wind divine bone, the first thing he had thought of was the cute and vexatious Tang Wan'er. In truth, he felt quite guilty toward her because Tang Wan'er was the kind of girl who liked to live freely and vivaciously. But by being with him, other than acting a bit petty occasionally, she never complained. You can't fully merge with it now. It is said it can only merge with someone above the Nether Passage realm. But you can try to commune with it for now as a foundation for the merger, said Long Chen. Wild. Long Chen now called Wild. Curiously, he hadn't seen Wild this entire time. Big Brother Long Chen. Suddenly, a rough voice rang out from the distance. Long Chen saw Wild running over while carrying two corpses of the corpse devouring armored spiders. One of them had several teeth marks on it. Crunching sounds rang out from Wild's mouth. Seeing that he even dared to eat the corpse devouring armored spiders, Mo Nian shivered. Their armor was something that even divine items had difficulty piercing, but Wild was eating them easily. Furthermore, it seemed that their poison and disgusting aura of decay were nothing to Wild. He was happy eating them as if they were meat bonds. Even Long Chen felt his stomach heaving. This child's teeth and stomach were also heaven defying. Can you really eat these? Asked Long Chen. Yes, they're delicious. They're full of energy. In just a few bites, Wild stuffed those two corpses into his stomach. Did you call for me? Long Chen felt speechless inside. Wild really wasn't picky about food. Even something with poison that could kill nether passage experts could be eaten. The barbarian race was truly mystical. Guo Ran and the others had given Wild the corpses of the beasts that they had slain on the way. Wild's body hadn't changed too much, but there were now some golden spots all over it. The two horns on his head in particular looked as if they were made of gold. Wild's body seemed to contain a terrifying beast within. Wild's arms were thicker than a normal person's waist. His skin had a shine to it like dragon hide. As the other dragon blood warriors slaughtered the corpse devouring armored spiders, he was the only one who dared to run aside and consume their corpses. No matter how they tried to bite him, they were unable to pierce his skin. He liked that. He could just sit there and reach out for food. Long Chen had originally thought that with the dragon king's essence blood, his physical body would have surpassed Wild's power. But he knew that without his Azure Dragon battle armor, he wouldn't dare to let the corpse devouring armored spiders attack him like that. Thinking about how terrifying Wild had become, it truly made a person envious. Without needing to comprehend the heavenly deos or bitterly cultivate, 
without needing to train in magical arts. Wilde simply ate and slept. Just like that, he constantly grew stronger. Guo Ran in particular was envious. Guo Ran also didn't like cultivating, but he didn't have Wilde's fate. With the Dragonblood Legion's cultivation speed soaring, he had to follow. It was unknown how bitter that was. He dreamed of having Wilde's ability. Wilde, you've lost your bone club. I'll give you a new weapon, said Long Chen. Really? Great, Wilde exclaimed in delight. After his bone club was broken, he hadn't found a suitable weapon. Guo Ran had made a new club for Wilde after his bone club was broken, but upon encountering a 13th rank beast, Wilde's club ended up shattering. After that, Guo Ran and Xia Chen hadn't had time to create a better weapon for him, so Wilde had been empty handed since, which wasn't very convenient for fighting. Mo Nian, take out the door bolt for Wilde, said Long Chen. He was referring to the door bolt that the two of them had worked together to take off in the netherworld. What? That's clearly mine. How did it become a gift from you? Can you have some sense of shame? Mo Nian rolled his eyes. Mo Nian turned to talk to Wilde directly. Brother, remember, this door bolt is bone. I'm the one giving it to you. But it's very heavy, so you have to be prepared. Once it's taken out, it might not be possible to put it away again. Last time, taking the door bolt had almost shattered his astral space. Mo Nian had cursed Long Chen after that. This door bolt had remained in his astral space ever since. He was unable to use it. The heaven seizing sun hunting Bao was also unable to absorb its energy. Now that Long Chen wanted to send it to Wild, he was actually quite happy to get rid of it. Heavy? The heavier the better, exclaimed Wild. You're the one who said that. So be prepared. I'm going to take it out. I can't control it. So everyone else should back up. Mo Nian formed hand seals. His manifestation shuddered and the void rumbled. A giant door bolt suddenly appeared in the air. The entire world shuddered and rumbled. It was as if the world could not bear its weight. Prepare yourself. I'm going to drop it. Shouted Mo Nian. His voice strained. This thing was so heavy that even tossing it out of his astral space took a toll. Mo Nian's manifestation flickered and the black door bolt suddenly fell toward Wilde. The door bolt smashed toward him. Massive spatial ripples came pouring off of it as it fell. Wilde immediately shouted and grew larger. He then grabbed the door bolt. Boom. The earth crumbled. Wilde and the door bolt vanished from sight within a bottomless hole. I said it was too heavy. Now it has sunk to the bottom of the earth. Sighed Mo Nian. Just watch. Said Long Chen. Confident in Wilde. Suddenly. A roar came from down below. The earth started shaking, and the door bolt slowly started to come back out of the ground. Following the door bolt was a golden giant. Wild had transformed into a giant who looked to be made of gold. His giant body caused the earth to shudder with every step. Wild suddenly let out an immense roar. The door bolt reacted, and Black Chi surged out of it. Nether Chi infected this world. The Nether Chi infected the corpse devouring armored spiders in the sky and they began to fall like hail. Dead. Wild actually activated the door bolt's runes? How is that possible? Long Chen and Mo Nian were both shocked. This door bolt was completely incomprehensible to the two of them. They were unable to comprehend its runes, let alone activate them. Who would have thought that the large oaf Wild would be able to activate the door bolt's runes and unleash Nether Chi? Wild, release all your anger and swat these spiders to death, shouted Long Chen. This current state of Wilde's was a kind of berserk state. The angrier he became, the stronger he grew. Hearing Long Chen's instructions, Wilde swung the door bolt. As a result, a huge ripple spread through the void. Any of the corpse devouring armored spiders touched by the door bolt were blasted to bits. Black Chi surged out, killing any of the corpse devouring armored spiders that it touched. Theoretically, Corpse devouring armored spiders that lived within tombs already possessed the aura of death and decay. They should have a certain resistance to Nether Chi, but that Black Chi instantly killed them. Wild swung the door bolt several times, and countless corpse devouring armored spiders fell from the sky. Long Chen ordered everyone to gather them. Those corpses were good things to both him and Wild. Despite the absolute slaughter, the corpse devouring armored spiders continued to fill the gaps that Wilde created. They charged forward, 
completely unafraid of death. Suddenly, light came from the sky. Wilde had killed so many of them that he finally thinned them out. The number being killed had far exceeded the number charging over. It was unknown how many of their corpses that the Dragonblood Legion had gathered. Long Chen had piled up a 10,000-mile mountain of corpses by him. Just at this moment, Wilde's body suddenly shrank. His weary voice rang out. Brother Long, I can't hold on any longer. Chapter 2507 Covering the stars Wilde had swung the door bolt fewer than 20 times but had still exhausted all his energy. He was soaked in sweat and panting heavily. Wilde shrank and fell to the ground. However, the door bolt also shrank with him. It became a few meters long and as thick as a person's leg, a perfect size for Wilde to hold in his current state. Although Wilde had shrunk back down, the golden light on his body had yet to fully regress. Wilde couldn't return to his normal state, or the door bolt would sink him into the earth. Wilde held the door bolt in one hand and took out a bowl with the other. He grabbed a tail from within the bowl and tossed it into his mouth. He chewed a few times and swallowed it. His aura began to recover. Then he ran over to a pile of corpses. With the wave of the bowl, thousands of corpse-devouring armored spiders shrank until they were the size of a sesame seed. They were then rapidly popped into his mouth. That wasn't enough. He began to run around with the bowl, consuming the corpses at a crazy rate. His energy was quickly restored. At this time, more and more of the corpse-devouring armored spiders came flying over. The Dragonblood Legion continued to maintain their formation slaughtering the ones that entered Long Chen's flame domain. Wild, eat later, hit them a few more times, called out Long Chen. All right, having recovered a bit, Wild summoned his barbarian blood gold body once more. He swung the door bolt, and a rain of corpses fell again. His killing power could not be compared to the dragon blood legion. After five swings, the sky was empty. There were no more corpse devouring armored spiders to kill. Wilde began to pant heavily once more. He devoured more corpses to recover his energy while everyone else cleaned up the battlefield. This time, Long Chen didn't take more of the corpses. Although he needed them, they were Wilde's rations. Long Chen couldn't fight with Wilde over them. The heavenly killin' demon trees were now 300 meters tall, but they were still in the sapling state. Despite that, the amount of energy within a single one of them was greater than the forest of world trees. This was a nice surprise. After Wilde recovered a bit, they prepared to move out. To save time, Long Chen summoned the Azure Dragon battle armor and put the door bolt in his astral space. For the safety of the heavenly Killin demon trees, he couldn't put it into his primal chaos space. The immense power of the door bolt caused his entire astral space to shake. It was fortunate that he had advanced to the fourth step of Nether Passage, or his astral space might have been broken. Without the door bolt, Wilde could jump onto Cloud's back with everyone else. Cloud spread her wings and transformed into a streak of rainbow light. They followed the marks of battle. The space ahead of them grew darker and darker as if they were throwing themselves into a bottomless abyss. Why is the aura here so cold? Tang Wan'er shivered. It wasn't just Tang Wan'er. Everyone else felt the same thing. It felt like they were approaching somewhere terrifying. This place was full of the aura of death. Only Wilde didn't sense anything. He had eaten an unknown number of the corpse devouring armored spiders and fallen asleep. The divine families definitely hid something from me, but the corrupt path and pill valley seem to know it. However, it doesn't matter what kind of scheme they have, it will quickly be revealed, said Long Chen. Upon entering the Starfield Divine World, he immediately smelled the scent of a sinister scheme. The Divine Families had hidden things about the Starfield Divine World. As for the Corrupt Path and Pill Valley, they also didn't breathe a word of what they knew to anyone else. Even Di Feng who had leaned heavily on the Divine Families might not necessarily have come into contact with such a core secret. As for the idiots of the Sea Demon race, they were being used and had no idea. When it came to the Everlasting Families, he believed that Nangong Zuiyu and Bidang Rushuang didn't know anything or they definitely would have warned him, either explicitly or at least implicitly. Only Dong Fang Yuiang seemed to have hidden himself truly well. It seemed that he knew many things. He was like a ghost hiding in the dark waiting to deal a fatal blow. However, based on Long Chen's guess, 
Dong Fang Yuyang must have known quite a bit in order to obtain Di Feng's trust. Without that, Di Feng wouldn't have died to his hand so easily. The world ahead of them grew darker. It was like endless darkness. Although everyone used their divine sense to replace their eyes, this darkness still made them feel an instinctual fear. Long Chen, this is most likely a trap, said Meng Qi. Looking at the endless darkness ahead of them, she felt like they were entering the mouth of a terrifying beast. I know, Yun Tian must know as well, but the fact that Yun Tian still felt duty-bound to charge in means that he has enough of a reason. We have to follow no matter what. Now that the Dragonblood Legion has advanced to the fourth step of Nether Passage, who do we have to be afraid of? Long Chen smiled. Exactly. We've reached the fourth step and finished awakening our manifestation. Who can stop us? Guo Ran laughed heroically. The current Guo Ran was growing increasingly conceited. Upon entering the Starfield Divine World, his heaven-defying karmic luck had caused his confidence to inflate. His new armor in particular made him feel like he was also a peerless expert. He wanted to test its power. The Dragonblood warriors also felt an itch for a real battle. Hearing that it was a trap, rather than being perturbed, their battle intent soared. The auras in the earth are growing denser, said Dong Mingyu as she looked at the scars of battle. As an assassin, she was sensitive to all auras. Looking at the battle scars, she guessed that they had been made within the last few hours. Cloud speed was truly amazing. They were getting closer and closer. If this place wasn't so dangerous that Cloud didn't dare to use her full speed, perhaps they might have already caught up. Yun Tian has been injured. Long Chen's heart shook. He reached out a hand, and a rock came flying into his hand. There was a drop of blood on it. The blood was bright red and had sunk into the rock's veins. It still emitted Yun Chien's aura. Only a sovereign's descendant would possess blood with such a noble aura. Cloud, go faster. Everyone, prepare for battle, said Long Chen. Evil Moon appeared in his hand. Yun Tian was in danger. He was hunting down Yi Ming while facing multiple powerful enemies. The fact that he had been injured meant he was at an absolute disadvantage. That was very normal. He was facing the combined attacks of Feng Fei, the Pill Fairy, Jia Rishan, Yi Ming and others. The fact that he could continue hunting down Yi Ming like this meant that his power was truly heaven-defying. However, no matter how heaven-defying he was, against that many powerful enemies, he would sooner or later run out of energy. Even though he had been injured, Yun Tian hadn't stopped. Based on the battle scars, he was focused entirely on killing Yi Ming. Yi Ming's blood had been extremely common on their way here, but not anyone else's. Cloud's feathers lit up with rainbow light. Her speed gradually increased. Due to how fast they were, Cloud was unable to even search the tracks. She needed Meng Chi to indicate which direction to go. Up ahead, it seems, there's a giant tree, exclaimed Meng Chi suddenly. With Cloud's speed, everyone else also quickly sensed it. Heavens, what tree is this big? Everyone was shocked. Even Long Chen. There was no way to describe the size of this tree. Even with Cloud's speed, after several seconds, it still looked like they had barely gotten closer to it. Compared to its size, Cloud's speed seemed to have dropped. This tree had already escaped the sky. The stars in the sky were like its fruit. Compared to this tree, the heavenly Killin Demon Tree and the Luo Spirit Race's Life Spirit God were saplings. Everyone was deeply shaken. If they were not personally seeing it, None of them would have believed there could be such a giant existence in this world. Strange. Why doesn't this tree have any vitality muttered Lu Ruian. Only then did everyone else realize it. Theoretically, such a giant tree should be emitting a vast amount of life energy. They should already be able to sense it. But even at this distance, they couldn't feel anything. Is it already dead? Wondered Guo Ran. Cloud, don't hold back any longer. Go straight toward that tree shouted Long Chen suddenly. Cloud's wings shook and space suddenly twisted. Everyone felt like they had entered a tunnel where time was flowing past them. In just a moment, they reached the tree. Once they were beneath its crown, they could truly feel its size. If this tree was planted within the martial heaven continent, it might be able to completely cover the central plains. Even after entering its crown, it took an incense stick's worth of time to see a towering trunk. Suddenly, 
Countless black figures charged out of the earth at them. It's the heaven-devouring black armor cores, shouted Long Chen. He swung his saber, unleashing a river of black stars that slaughtered them. Their arrival caused cloud speed to drop. The space around them once more became clear, and they heard explosions coming ahead. Long Chen looked over. He saw a huge furnace unleashing divine light be sent flying back. We've found them, shouted Long Chen. Chapter 2508 Impending Crisis Cloud's huge body was blasting through the heaven-devouring black armor cores. She had already mastered all the divine abilities of the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race. Her feathers had fully bloomed and she was unstoppable. However, the numbers of the heaven-devouring black armor cores were too great. They still impacted her speed. Some of them managed to catch up from the rear, but they were wiped out by the Dragonblood Legion. One of them was caught by Wild. He took a bite out of its head, chewing half of its head with its helmet. A moment later, Wild spat it out. Everyone was speechless. The Black Armor Corps were essentially dead spirits. How could they be eaten? Mo Nyan, let's go on ahead. Everyone else, stick together and follow when you can shouted Long Chen. After saying that, Long Chen and Mo Nian sped off. Mo Nian unleashed an arrow with the heaven-swallowing sun hunting bow, tearing a path through the black armor cores. The two of them then sped down the path. Even though their numbers were immense, they weren't as many as the corpse-devouring armored spiders. Before the gap closed, Mo Nian shot another arrow, keeping the path open. The two of them quickly passed through the barricade. They quickly managed to see the battlefield ahead. Yun Shian's sword was dancing through the air, his white robes fluttering. However, his robes now had blood spots on them. That fresh blood was like plum blossoms, appearing particularly conspicuous. In front of Yun Tian was Jarishan, Feng Fei, and the Pill Fairy. The only one missing was Yi Ying, and the three of them were blocking Yun Tian. Feng Fei's divine sword and the Pill Fairy's Danite furnace were blazing with divine light. They had actually taken a defensive posture. As for Jarishan, he had summoned a golden giant with a giant hammer. A powerful swing of this hammer showed that he had recovered to his peak state. Jarishan, Feng Fei, and the Pill Fairy's auras were all in their peak state. Only Yun Shian's aura had dropped. Despite that, the three of them were in a defensive state. It seemed that they didn't want to defeat Yun Tian. They simply wanted to trap him here. Which one do you want? Long Chen asked Mo Nian. I'll take Feng Fei. I've long since found her dislikable, said Mo Nian. All right, then I'll handle Jarishan again. The two of them reached the battlefield. Long Chen immediately summoned his full power. Azure Dragon Battle Armor. Five Star Battle Armor. Long Chen's Divine Ring burst into existence. This time. Long Chen didn't need to slowly increase his power as he had gained full control of the power of the Azure Dragon. He entered the battlefield with a merciless slash of his saber. Jarishan, I'll cut off your perverted rod and see how you screw the heavens. Long Chen's roar was like thunder, with his attack arriving at the same time. Long Chen, we've been waiting for you for a long time. Jarishan sent his golden giant's hammer smashing toward Long Chen. A loser also dares to say such big words? Today, I will definitely kill you. Boom. Jarishan's giant hammer was shattered. Evil Moon's Saberchi continued to blast the golden giant into pieces. Last time I was careless, but now I'll definitely kill you. You arrogant bastard. Jarishan was infuriated to be called a loser. His defeat last time was his life's greatest humiliation. A rod appeared in Jarishan's hand, and he shot through the air. Endless golden mountains appeared within his manifestation, giving off divine light that flowed into his body. The heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod erupted with divine light. It emitted an immense pressure that it hadn't possessed last time. Last time, Jarishan had been weakened and hadn't been able to unleash the heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod's full power. Now that he was in peak condition, he was finally able to bring out its full potential. He wanted to wipe away his disgrace in one blow. The world shuddered as the heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod's power continued to grow. It was like it was sucking in all the world's energy. Boom. The divine items smashed into each other, unleashing a huge chi wave. Despite this wild explosion of power, the giant tree whose crown they were under didn't budge in the slightest. Not even the branches swayed. 
Evil Moon and the Heaven Suppressing Dragon Coiling Rod pressed against each other, one blazing with divine light and one shrouded by black chi. Black and gold clashed. In the distance, it was like beautiful fireworks were exploding. Arrows were flying through the air as Mo Nian fought Feng Fei. Just like Long Chen, Mo Nian unleashed his full power from the start. The heaven swallowing sun hunting Bo's runes were fully activated. He displayed the full power of his bow with every arrow. In front of a sovereign sprout, Mo Nian wasn't the slightest bit careless. Every twang of his bowstring was like the explosion of a star. Every arrow he shot was a world destroying blow. As for Feng Fei, a vague image of a phoenix would appear within her sword light. The phoenix filled the air with an ancient will that made a person's soul quiver. Feng Fei was also using her full power. Big, brother Yun Tian, are you alright? shouted Long Chen. Calling him big brother was a bit embarrassing though. After all, he called sovereign Yun Shang big brother as well. So calling Yun Tian big brother felt a bit strange. However, if he called him anything else, it would feel like they were distant, with no brotherly feel whatsoever. You came at the right time. I'm going to stop Yi Ming. He cannot be allowed to consume the heaven-devouring Fiend King's corpse spirit energy, or the star-field divine world will fall under his control, said Yun Tian. With a slash of his sword, he sent the Danite furnace flying. Just as he pushed through that opening, a heavenly diagram descended from the sky and enveloped him. Get through me first, shouted the pill fairy coldly. She had actually taken out the Brahma divine diagram. She had brought both of Pill Valley's priceless treasures. Chanting filled the air as the Brahma Divine Diagram appeared. The world became illusory, and Yun Tian was sucked inside. At the same time, the Pill Fairy entered the world of the Diagram with the Danite Furnace. Long Chen's heart shook. The Brahma Divine Diagram was an extremely strange treasure. He had also been sucked inside of it before, but at that time, it had only been under the control of the Vice Master of Pill Valley's Flame Divine Palace. The power of the Brahma Divine Diagram depended on the power of its master. At that time, Long Chen had barely escaped. Now that it was under the control of a Divine Daughter, its power would be even greater. Long Chen wasn't worried about Yun Tian being killed, as a sovereign's son wouldn't die so easily. But Yun Shian's words were worrisome. It seemed that Yi Ming was in the midst of doing something even more frightening. He had to be stopped. Now that Yun Tian was trapped within the Brahma Divine Diagram, he was in a different world. There was no way for them to communicate. You dare to get distracted at this time? Long Chen, you really deserve death. Just as Long Chen's head was rapidly working, his arms shook. Jarishan's heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod's power rapidly grew. In Jarishan's eyes, for Long Chen to actually dare to talk to Yun Tian during their fight indicated that Long Chen looked down on him, and this enraged him fully. Golden light poured from his manifestation into the heaven suppressing dragon coiling rod. Its divine light grew to a blinding level. The heaven suppressing dragon coiling rod was a terrifying divine item, and even Jarishan could only unleash its potential in his peak state. Last time, he didn't view Long Chen as a real opponent resulting in him no longer possessing the power to fully activate it by the time he needed to. This time, he was in peak condition. His manifestation power poured into it. The pressure from the heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod grew greater and greater. Seeing this, Long Chen roared, and an azure dragon appeared swimming above his scales. A dragon roar resounded through heaven and earth. It was only once the image of the Azure Dragon appeared that the true power of the Azure Dragon battle armor was unleashed. This image could not be summoned directly. It required the full circulation of his Azure Dragon essence blood. You're the one who deserves death. You shameless idiots went four against one and still have the face to call yourselves sovereign sprouts? What a joke. In my eyes, you're like proud dog shti. Scram. Long Chen's voice suddenly resounded with the dragon roar. Evil Moon's dragon marks lit up, unleashing a sinister and bloodthirsty aura that turned the world cold. Boom. Golden light shattered as Jarishan was blown back. He stared in shock. Even with his full power, he was still suppressed by Long Chen in terms of pure power. I really dislike people like you who view others as trash, as if the world lives for you. Who do you think you are? Lightning wings appeared on Long Chen's back. He vanished. 
appearing like a phantom before reappearing right in front of Jarishan and hacking down his saber. Golden light exploded. It was like a sun had been destroyed. Long Chen's hands trembled as he was blown back. As for Jarishan, he wildly hacked up blood while holding the heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod. When competing with pure power, he was instantly injured. Evil Moon unleashed a sinister light. He was just about to press the attack when a tear appeared in the Brahma Divine Diagram. Yun Shian's voice came from within. Long Chen, you have to kill Yi Ming quickly. He is beneath the tree. If you don't kill him now, it will be too late. Chapter 2509 Barbarian Blood Giant vs. Golden Giant Long Chen was preparing to fight Jarishan to the death when he heard Yun Shian's voice. His heart shook. The tear in the Brahma Divine Diagram quickly sealed itself. Yun Tian was cut off once more. It appeared that after exhausting himself fighting for so long, it was very difficult for him to break free from the Brahma Divine Diagram's world. Even a sovereign's son had no immediate solution against the Pill Fairy and her two divine items. Long Chen could only stop himself from panicking. Keep dreaming if you think you can get past. Once Yi Ming unseals the fiend corpse, all of you will die here. Jarishan smiled sinisterly. Wiping off the blood on his mouth. Just at this moment, the ground began to explode. One figure after another came crawling out. Those were six meter figures that were similar to the rest of the heaven swallowing black armor cores. However, their bodies were larger, and their auras were more frightening. Ha ha ha. Even the dead generals of the black armor cores have begun reviving. Long Chen, even if you turn around now, you won't be able to get away. Jarishan laughed wildly. Those strange life forms pounced on Long Chen once they crawled out of the ground. Long Chen slashed Evil Moon, shattering the bone blade in one of their hands and striking its head. Half of its head was cut off and black liquid sprayed, filling the air with a disgusting scent. Long Chen's heart shook. These so called generals were truly powerful. Even in this state, his attack wasn't able to blast one to pieces, despite having half its head cut off. This general didn't die. It continued pouncing toward Long Chen. Long Chen kicked it in the chest, and it exploded, transforming into black mist. How is it? These general level dead spirits are definitely powerful. I can tell you this. They've been absorbing the energy of this tree for tens of thousands of years, and they have no sense of pain or fear. They only have one goal, which is to kill the enemies in front of them. You have no idea how many dead spirits are buried beneath this tree. You've fallen for our trap. We drew you here to kill you all in one blow. Those corpse devouring armored spiders were just a stall tactic to keep you separated from Yun Tian. You didn't notice any of the clues. If you had fled, you would have been smart. Instead, you came jumping in yourself while bringing your dragon blood legion. You really were cooperating with us. Ha ha ha. Jarishan's laughter was cut off by a slash from Long Chen, and he coughed up another mouthful of golden blood. In front of absolute power, all schemes are useless. You think an idiot like you can block me. After blasting through Jarishan, Long Chen rushed toward the tree. You think you can pass? Are you dreaming? Golden Mountain God Trap. Jarishan sneered and suddenly stabbed the heaven suppressing dragon coiling rod into the ground. The earth shuddered and the land instantly turned golden. One golden mountain after another pierced out of the ground like sharp swords piercing the heavens, blocking Long Chen's path. Long Chen shattered the first one with a slash of his sword. Huge explosions followed as he blasted his way through. However, even as he destroyed them, they quickly grew back and formed more mountains in his way. Just at that moment, he felt a breeze behind him. Without looking back, he swung Evil Moon behind him. Sending Jarishan flying, Long Chen continued to charge through the mountains. His speed was severely impacted. At the same time, countless generals of the Black Armor Corps popped out of the ground, attacking him. Long Chen was infuriated. These general level spirits seemed to be targeting him. They didn't attack Jarishan even if they were affected by his attacks. Whirlwind Slash. Long Chen swung Evil Moon in a circle of death. Anything in his way. Whether it was the general spirits or the golden mountains were blasted to bits. Long Chen continued forward, attacking hundreds of times. Jarishan came charging back once more, and this time it seemed that Long Chen had been attacking for too long, and his attack had gotten old. 
he was the one knocked out of his rhythm by Jarishan. As a result, more golden mountains sprouted. All his previous efforts were essentially wasted. You must be dreaming if you think you can get past me. The only thing left for you is to die here. Not only will you die, but your dragon blood legion will also perish with you. But don't worry, I'll take care of those beauties of yours. Ha ha ha. Jarishan laughed in satisfaction at seeing Long Chen's rage. Fine, I'll just kill you first. Killing intent exploded out of Long Chen. Meng Chi and the others were his reverse scale. Jarishan was truly courting death. Brother Long, I'll help you. Big sister Meng Chi said that you should stop Yimying. A coarse voice rang out, and Wild's figure came charging in. Wild's speed wasn't particularly fast. So Long Chen guessed that he had been sent in ahead by one of Xia Chen's formations. As soon as he appeared, Long Chen took out the door bolt for him. Wild, I'll leave this fellow to you. Kill him, shouted Long Chen. Ignoring Jarishan, he rushed away, adding on, he's just a wild beast, you're the beast. Jarishan cursed Long Chen, completely disregarding Wild. Get over here. I'm your opponent Wild smashed the door bolt at Jarishan as Jarishan attempted to prevent Long Chen from getting away. At first, Jarishan had been completely ignoring him, thinking he was just sacrificing his life to give Long Chen a chance to escape. However, when Wild grabbed the door bolt, a terrifying nether chi filled the air. Jarishan was horrified to realize how powerful Wild was. Boom. The door bolt smashed into the heaven suppressing dragon coiling rod. Both sides retreated, with Wild knocked back 12 steps. Every step back caused the earth to collapse. He landed on his butt, with the door bolt escaping his hand and creating a bottomless hole in the ground where it landed. As for Jarishan, he had been smashed into the earth with his rod. He was nowhere to be found. Wild hastily ran over to the hole and dug out the door bolt. When he came back out, Jarishan had just managed to come out of the hole he was in. I'll kill you. Without hesitation, Wild smashed the door bolt at Jarishan again. Boom. Wild had summoned his golden giant form. His door bolt was like a heavenly pillar, giving Jarishan nowhere to run. With a furious roar, Jarishan blocked with his full power, only to once more be smashed into the ground. His fight with Wild was completely different from his fight with Long Chen. Long Chen's fighting style contained the power of certain laws. Due to his five star battle armor, the space around him had been solidified by the power of their domains, becoming much more stable. However, when it came to Wild, it was just the pure power of his physical body. There was no so-called law to it. Jarishan was unable to effectively use his power like this. Golden mountains burst out of the ground, condensing into a golden giant. Jarishan had also chosen to manifest a giant form. He attacked with a giant heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod. The two weapons repeatedly clashed, creating giant explosions. The shockwaves blasted apart the generals of the Black Armor Corps. Wild's entire body was covered in golden spots, while Jarishan had transformed into a giant that looked to be made of gold through and through. From a distance, it looked like two golden giants were fighting. Jarishan was shocked that the Dragonblood Legion actually possessed another expert on this level. Furthermore, Wild's techniques were extremely strange. There were several times that he misjudged his movements and ended up being beaten to the ground. In his eyes, Wild's techniques were strange. What he didn't know was that Wild didn't have techniques. He was just randomly swinging his weapon one swing at a time. Fun. This is really fun. Wild roared. He had never had a fight like this. He could truly fight to his heart's content against another giant wielding a similar weapon to his own. Ignoring his bleeding hands, he began to fight even more valiantly. The two horns on his head were starting to grow brighter as he fought, and divine light began to fill his body without him being aware of it. The spots of gold gradually became connected. A thread of gold weaved through them. Wild's body was silently transforming as something within him slowly awakened. With Wild blocking Jarishan, Long Chen managed to reach the tree. When he finally reached the roots of the tree, he saw countless corpses. Dragon Corpses Chapter 2510 Fiend King's corpse up ahead was a giant altar embedded into the ground and wrapped up by the giant tree's trunk. What was revealed was merely a fraction of the altar. 
a crescent moon that was so large that it was impossible to see the end of it. This gigantic altar was made from countless corpses, which were some kind of winged dragons. They had been piled into very particular diagrams. Those withered corpses seemed to have had all their energy sucked away, but they still emitted frightening auras. Their auras were not of the 13th rank. It seemed that they had reached the peak of the 12th rank, but the sense of danger that they gave off was far greater than ordinary peak 12th rank magical beasts. This was a type of dragon that Long Chen had never seen before. Although they looked to be dragons, there was one big difference. According to what he knew, dragons either didn't have horns or had a pair of horns, but these dragons had a single horn that was curled backward like a sickle. Furthermore, they had long and thin tails like a whip, the end of which was a sharp tip with thorns. Are they from your evil dragon race? Asked Long Chen. Evil Moon cursed. TCH. Don't insult the evil dragon race. These are the lowest cowards of the dragon race, the poison dragons. Furthermore, they're the most disgusting of the poison dragon race, the long-tailed poison dragons. Long Chen, help me out. Toss them into your primal chaos space and destroy them. They're an insult to the dragon race. There were many varieties amongst the dragon race. Long Chen had already encountered the true dragon race, the dark evil dragon race the purgatory evil dragon race, as well as the spirit dragon race. As for other dragons, according to Evil Moon, they were mostly inferior species with impure bloodlines. The evil dragons, the spirit dragons, or even the poison dragons were all large classifications. The dark evil dragon race and the purgatory evil dragon race lived in different places, but were still classified as part of the evil dragon race. They were races directly descended from the true dragon race with their own pure bloodlines. But there was one particular branch within the dragon race, the poison dragons. The poison dragons were the only ones within the dragon race that possessed poison. Their poison was their greatest weapon. If stabbed, they could defeat an opponent that was even stronger than them. Despite that, they were always viewed as a disgrace to the dragon race. They didn't have the soul of the dragon race or the pride. They were willing to submit to anyone else in order to live. They had even once been raised in large numbers by the human race and used as mounts. They were the only existences amongst the dragon race that could be enslaved. Due to this, they were viewed as scum of the dragon race, and any experts of the dragon race who encountered them would slaughter them. It was unknown if it was because the poison dragon race simply lacked any backbone and liked to depend on others or if it was because they were hunted down by their fellow dragons and had no choice but to rely on others. The history could no longer be traced. Regardless, there was an immense hatred between the poison dragon race and the rest of the dragon race. They would fight to the death on sight. Long Chen had no time to gather these corpses at this time. He was rushing toward the core area where spots of divine light could be seen. Yi Ming must be there. Long Chen rushed toward the core of the altar. He finally saw Yi Ming sitting in the center of it. In front of Yi Ming was a large figure wearing black armor. This figure was 30 meters tall while sitting, and there was a black sword resting on its knees. Black flames flickered around its body. Yi Ming seemed to be undergoing some kind of ancient ceremony, communing with this monster. Is he trying to awaken it? Asked Long Chen. Correct. This is the corpse of the heaven-devouring fiend king. His soul essence was exhausted by the Dragon King, but his physical body was not destroyed. Just like the rest of the heaven-devouring black armor cores, the seed of resurrection was planted for the right opportunity. I remember that there was another body of this fiend king in the 10,000 dragon nest. We took the dragon source, the dragon blood, and the divine bones, resulting in the seal weakening and allowing Yi Ming to profit. He obtained its soul seal. That body was nothing more than a key for the real corpse which is here. He wants to turn this corpse into his puppet, and it seems that he's almost done. The black armor corps present here is already listening to his orders. Once the fiend king is revived, everyone here will die to it. You have to stop him. Even Evil Moon seemed to be grave, ignoring the disgrace of the poison dragons. What wild ambitions. Can he control the fiend king? Long Chen was shocked. Yi Ming had guts. What if the fiend king turned against him? Then wouldn't he be the first one to die? That was an unimaginably terrifying existence that had fought evenly against the dragon king. 
How could such an expert be controlled? If the Fiend King was killed by someone, then it would definitely retain its consciousness after reviving. Trying to control it is definitely courting death. But this Fiend King was exhausted by the Dragon King. The Dragon Race's will is the strongest. So its will was already ground down. This makes it perfectly suited for being made into a puppet. It will just be a husk without its own will. Although its power will be less than half of its peak when it was alive, it's definitely not something anyone here can handle. Furthermore, as someone who has gone through Nirvanic rebirth, who knows what kind of tricks Yi Ming has? He must be interrupted now, said Evil Moon. Long Chen was already charging over. He slashed Evil Moon at Yi Ming. Yi Ming's eyes suddenly flew open. He looked at Long Chen with a contemptuous smile. Long Chen, you're too late. Everything is under my control. Today, all of you will die here. Boom. A black barrier suddenly appeared, blocking Long Chen's attack. The entire altar shuddered. The center of the altar actually had a formation protecting it. Damn, this bastard is prepared. The energy here comes from the same source as me. Evil Moon's voice changed. This was dark energy, the same as its own. The barrier was assimilating its energy. Everything is futile. Every one of your actions is within my calculations. Just keep struggling. I delight in the appearance of experts right before their deaths, said Yi Ming indifferently. Having failed to break the barrier with his first swing, Long Chen put Evil Moon away. Yi Ming, you really lived a whole life for nothing. You think someone like you can become a god? You should be thankful that you weren't born in the same generation as me in your last life or I'd have beaten you into a dog. The calmer you act, the more nervous you are inside. You try to anger me so that I can't find your weak point. Before, I looked down on you, and now, I look down on you even more. Lightning suddenly exploded out of Long Chen. Lightning wings appeared on his back and a lightning spear manifested in his hand. The lightning grew more and more intense. Countless thin lightning dragons coiled around Long Chen. At this moment, Long Chen told Lai Long not to hold back any longer. Lai Long's power rushed out like a dam had been opened. A layer of lightning armor formed on Long Chen. Even his eyes had lightning runes appear within them. He looked to be the very reincarnation of a lightning god. Wild and unstoppable. It had been a long time since Lai Long had unleashed all its power. The crackling lightning left cracks in the void. Even Long Chen had not expected Lai Long to be this powerful. After his last tribulation, Long Chen had not unleashed his full thunder force again. He had simply used it as a support energy. It was only now that Lai Long unleashed its full power that Long Chen realized how foolish he had been. He had actually possessed such a powerful trump card and kept it hidden for so long. If it hadn't been for the fact that thunder force was a perfect counter to dark energy, Long Chen wouldn't have even thought to use it. With Lai Long becoming one with Long Chen. Thunder Force raged through his body. It was fortunate that he had absorbed the Dragon King's essence blood and tempered his body again. Otherwise, he wasn't sure his body would be able to endure the impact. After seeing the lightning exploding out of Long Chen, Yi Ming's face was still disdainful, but the hair on the back of his neck silently rose. Suddenly, Long Chen's lightning wings shook, and he shot forward like a shooting star. In the next instant, the lightning wings vanished. Instead, the lightning spear in his hand doubled in width. Lightning surged into his arm like a tsunami. Wild lightning soul battle spear. Lightning exploded, tearing through the heavens. The thunder was like the furious roar of a lightning god. The black barrier appeared once more. This barrier had even managed to block Evil Moon and resist the barrier-breaking effect of split the heavens. However, when the lightning spear stabbed into the barrier, Lightning energy spread through it with a violent ripple. In the next instant, the barrier exploded, unable to endure this thunderous attack. When the black barrier shattered, the lightning spear also broke. Long Chen came charging through the torrent of lightning, extending a hand. He summoned Evil Moon and slashed it at Yi Ming who could no longer act calm. Chapter 2511 Darkness Swallows the Heavens Boom Yi Ming was sent flying by Long Chen's saber. Your barriers destroyed. Why don't you show me your skills that let you become a god? Long Chen snorted and pressed onward, not giving Yi Ming any breathing room. Yi Ming rapidly retreated off of the altar. You think I'm afraid of you? Ha ha ha. What a joke. 
Yi Ming suddenly laughed. Whether it's Yun Tian or you, you really overestimate yourselves. I underwent nirvanic rebirth just to gain the ability to perfectly control dark energy and make up for my shortcomings. Now that I've obtained the source energy of the heaven-devouring fiend king, my dark energy has been perfected. I've reached my goal. There is no longer anyone in this world that can stop me. The only reason I fled here was to bait all of you into a death trap. What a joke. If you were that strong, you wouldn't need to set up barriers to stop me. If it wasn't for Jarishan, Feng Fei, and Yu Kingsuan, you would already be dead to Yun Shian's sword. Now you're even boasting shamelessly. Does that have any meaning? Long Chen sneered. His dragon scales lit up, and a dragon row rang out as he slashed his saber again. Since you're so foolish, I won't bother explaining things to you. I'll show you how strong a body of darkness is. Darkness exploded out of Yi Ming's back, looking like a black hole in the void. The space behind him was an abyss of death. His jagged sword unleashed an evil air, its edges like the teeth of a demonic fiend. At the same time, countless wailing screams came out of the sword. Heaven devouring domain? HMPH. It's child's play in front of me. You dare to take it out and embarrass yourself, sneered Long Chen. These words weren't from him but from Evil Moon. Big words from one so foolish. Yi Ming snorted and slashed his sword. The black hole behind him unleashed a ripple, supporting him. You're the foolish one. Long Chen's saber slashed down, and more and more runes lit up on Evil Moon's blade. A black chi also erupted out of it. The two black divine weapons clashed together, unleashing an explosion of black chi that devoured all the light within this world. Within this darkness was a black sphere that swelled up rapidly. At the center of it, the two divine weapons were touching. Both divine weapons were unleashing their core energy and trying to suppress each other. The sphere exploded like a star. But despite that giant explosion, the giant tree was not shaken. Only the branches waved slightly. If you didn't have dark energy, killing you would be as easy as turning a hand. But even if you have dark energy, so what? In the end, your dark energy isn't your own. While my dark energy is limitless, how are you supposed to fight with me? Sneered Yi Ming. This place is where the Fiend King died. In order to extend his power, he transformed all his subordinates' life energy into dark energy. I have already absorbed the seed of the Fiend King's soul essence and am the master of this place. All the energy here belongs to me. As for you, once your weapon's dark energy is exhausted, I will take your life. The more arrogant you act, the more it shows how nervous you are. You try to antagonize me and disturb my thoughts in fear that I'll see through your scheme. You really did waste a whole lifetime. Do you not know that in front of absolute power, all schemes are nonsense? Long Chen attacked with Evil Moon once more. This darkness made him lose his senses. He couldn't see, hear, smell, or feel. His divine sense could not extend past his body. This was a terrifying death domain. It could be said that within Yi Ming's domain, a person would become blind and unable to sense his location. It was only because of Evil Moon who was in possession of dark energy as well that he didn't need to fear this kind of bewilderment. Explosions continued to echo within the darkness, but from the outside, it merely appeared as if a giant black sphere was shuddering. It was impossible to see the inside. In the distance, the golden giant that Jarishan had manifested into was fighting wild. The two of them were clashing so intensely that the world shuddered. It was a true competition of power. Mo Nian was exploding with divine energy as he fought Feng Fei in the sky. The two of them were still in a stalemate. Feng Fei's gaze was icy with killing intent, and the cries of a phoenix echoed from within her manifestation. Her sword flowed smoothly like water, constantly striking toward Mo Nian's vitals without the slightest mercy. Within the Brahma Divine Diagram, Yun Tian was fighting the Pill Fairy. With the Day-Night Furnace, the Pill Fairy was like an ephemeral ghost, dodging Yun Shian's sword attacks. She was only intent on trapping him here. At this moment, the Dragonblood Legion finally managed to charge through the Black Armor cores. It had taken an hour. Support Wild. Cut down that Jarishan and we'll use the pieces of him to create a new set of armor for everyone. When they arrived, Guo Ran instantly set his sights on Jarishan. He liked money, and Jarishan's giant metal form was made of immortal metal. Furthermore, 
the ground beneath him had transformed into golden mountains. That was not just a manifestation but Jarishan's source energy. He was able to extract the metal energy from the ground. It also just so happened that Jarishan and Wild's battlefield was the closest. There was no need to make any detours. They charged right over. Scram. Ants. Jarishan roared furiously. He smashed the heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod into the ground. Countless golden thorns shot out of the ground at the dragon blood legion. Jarishan was already close to crazy at having failed to defeat Wild after so long. He didn't even place the dragon blood legion in his eyes and wanted to kill them all in one move. This was one of his special techniques that was always effective in group combat. When a person was pierced by one of these thorns, their bodies would become paralyzed and they would be turned into metal before shattering. Brothers, grab them. Guo Ran's eyes lit up against his expectations. This was his first time seeing so much immortal metal being sent to his door. Dodging the first one, he slashed it with his blood-colored saber. Boom. The giant metal thorn was cut in half and Guo Ran grabbed it. Haha, <laughs> what pure immortal metal. It's also an alloy. No wonder he dares to call himself Rishan. If he has this much money, he can do anything. Laughed Guo Ran. Suddenly, the fragment in Guo Ran's hand tried to escape his hold. Guo Ran was startled and hastily tossed it into his astral space. When it entered his astral space, its resistance vanished. This piece of immortal metal became his. We've struck gold. This is even better than mining. There's no need for further refinements or purifications. Guo Ran's eyes turned red with greed. The purity of the immortal metal within Jarishan's attack was extremely high. It could almost be directly forged into weapons. Although Guo Ran had found quite a few divine ore deposits in the Starfield Divine World, those ores needed to be purified first. Even the ores with the highest purity would normally only have a 3 in 10,000 purity. As for lower grade ores, their purity was only 1 in 100,000. If the purity was any lower, then it was essentially useless. Refining it would not make up for the cost in manpower and resources required for the purified result. Immortal metal required five purifications in order to just barely reach his standard for forging. Normally, he would require eight purifications to expel most of the impurities. But to push it to the limit would require 18 purifications or more. But that took too long. So the weapons and armor of the Dragon Blood Legion were made from immortal and divine ores that had undergone eight purifications. However, the fragment of immortal metal that he had just obtained had a purity around eight refinements. It could entirely be used to directly forge weapons. The reason immortal metal was so precious was because the actual metal only occupied a small portion of the ore another reason was due to the immense price of purifying them. Seeing the countless metal thorns, Guo Ran only had immortal metal dancing in his eyes. Jarishan was a living mountain of precious material. The dragon blood warriors began to shatter the metal thorns and gather them. Their swords were being used as picks while the metal thorns piercing toward them were the metal veins. In truth, those metal veins were quite tough. Quite a few of their picks ended up damaged. However, Guo Ran told everyone not to worry about the damage. The immortal gold that they were obtaining was well worth it. After all, Jarishan's immortal metal had hundreds of different kinds mixed in. Although the purity wasn't the highest, it was definitely worth the money. Courting death, Jarishan was enraged to see the Dragon Blood Legion acting like bandits stealing his gold. They were so fast that he had no time to pull back his immortal gold. He gnashed his teeth. When his immortal gold entered someone's astral space, it would become separated from him. He wouldn't be able to pull it back. Boom. Suddenly, the earth pulled around the dragon blood legion like a carpet, suffocating them. This golden carpet was suddenly sliced apart like a watermelon. Ziffeng, cut it some more, exclaimed Guo Ran delightedly. Yu Ziffeng's sword chi was truly unstoppable. Yu Ziffeng slashed his sword a few more times, cutting the golden carpet into dozens of pieces that fell from the sky. Brothers, grab the gold. Guo Ran was the first to fly out and suck a giant piece into his astral space. Put those down. Jarishan's eyes instantly turned red. That was his source immortal gold that he had taken great lengths to procure. Get down. Jarishan had just turned away when Wild's door bolt smashed into the back of his head. Chapter 2512 Snatching Gold Boom This attack was particularly strong. 
As a result, Jarishan's head was completely deformed and he tumbled back. The golden giant that Jarishan had turned into crashed through the heaven devouring black armor cores, blasting the ones he touched to dust. Coincidentally, he was sent blasting in the Dragonblood Legion's direction. Seeing him flying over made Guo Ran cry out excitedly. Brothers, lend me some power. Ignoring the fragments of immortal metal, Guo Ran's armor lit up and he attacked Jarishan himself. Just as he attacked, the Dragonblood Warrior's armor also lit up, sending energy toward him. Guo Ran's armor blazed like a sun as his saber fell. As Jarishan's golden giant tumbled back, Guo Ran aimed carefully. His saber landed on Jarishan's neck. The combined force of all the Dragonblood warriors made this blow unstoppable. Guo Ran's saber cleanly cut through Jarishan's neck, sending his head flying. Guo Ran immediately grabbed the head and tossed it into his astral space, not giving Jarishan any time to take it back. Guo Ran's heart almost burst out of his chest in joy. The moment he touched the head, he almost cried out. Jarishan's body was money. The immortal metal of this giant had a purity level that was even greater than his sabers. If it weren't for the combined power of the Dragonblood warriors supporting him, his saber might have shattered on contact with Jarishan's neck. The value of this head was immeasurable. Guo Ran felt like he was dreaming. Heavens, what a giant gold piece. Brothers, snatch it. Gu Yang charged over upon seeing Jarishan's headless corpse. Don't. Guo Ran gave a warning, but it was too late. Dozens of swords slashed into Jarishan's body, leaving only faint marks. However, those swords shattered. This golden giant was condensed of Jarishan's strongest immortal metal, something that even Guo Ran's weapons couldn't compare to, let alone the swords in the Dragonblood warrior's hands. Gu Yang and the others turned green, aggrieved. The tip of Gu Yang's spear had broken, and that was his treasure. You damn bastards. Jarishan's corpse suddenly roared and stood back up punching the Dragonblood Warriors. Get into formation the Dragonblood Warriors were startled, not having realized that Jarishan possessed an undying body. Even his head being cut off didn't kill him. Boom. Having left the main formation, the few hundred Dragonblood Warriors that had charged over to Jarishan's body hastily blocked. Every one of them coughed up blood as they were sent flying. You poor ghosts. You can all die. Jarishan went insane. He had never encountered an opponent who viewed his body as meat. Jarishan, Feng Fei, and the others of their level in the divine families had been busy fighting in other places. Those places were wastelands, and those life forms didn't understand the concept of immortal metal. Upon returning from that battlefield, Jarishan immediately encountered Long Chen and ended up having Mo Nian profit off of his body. At that time, there had only been one bandit. Now he had encountered an entire pack of them, with his head cut off and the source metal being stolen. He wasn't just pained at the loss but also humiliated. He, a great genius of the divine families, a sovereign sprout, was actually viewed as bountiful meat by so many people. He was unable to accept this humiliation. A new head formed on Jarishan's body, and he charged forward, roaring furiously. However, he fell after just one step. One of his legs had been bound by countless branches at some point. Die. Upon seeing that it was Chu Yao, he pulled, causing those branches to instantly explode. Before he could reach Chu Yao, a cold flash descended from the sky, and Jarishan stumbled. His head spun on his neck a few times before falling. The head was still spinning when Guo Ran grabbed it. He couldn't wait for it to fall to the ground. Wonderful. Little treasure Rishan. I really like you. Make some more heads. Guo Ran almost started dancing on Jarishan's neck. That act of his could not be more infuriating. Yu Zifeng had used his power to cut off Jarishan's head. However, he clearly turned a bit pale afterward. Using his sword chi to split apart such tough immortal metal was extremely taxing. Just at that moment, more branches burst out of the ground, binding Jarishan's body. He fell once more, his giant form appearing clumsy. Suddenly, his body shrank. Against the Dragonblood Legion, this giant form would only be a disadvantage. Upon shrinking down, the branches were no longer binding him. With a punch, he blasted away the branches in front of him. Slot, I'll make you long for death. Jarishan was in the midst of saying some vicious words when a giant door bolt smashed into his head. 
Wilde smashed him deep into the earth as though he had used a pillar to smash a fly. The Dragonblood warriors hastily retreated as a wave of earth erupted, but they were still buried. You've really pissed me off. Jarishan's roar came from beneath the earth. The ground suddenly split apart as he summoned his golden giant form once more. He then smashed the heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod at the Dragonblood warriors. Jarishan wasn't afraid of Wilde, but he was terrified of these bandits who were constantly stealing his immortal metal. That was equivalent to stealing his source energy, and it was a detriment to his combat power. Although his fight with Wilde had been difficult, with neither side being able to get an advantage, having the Dragonblood Legion have its sights on him was far more uncomfortable. He had to constantly be on guard against them stealing his immortal metal. Such a battle was far too stifling. You ignorant thieves. Do you know what dignity and honor are? Do you have no sense of honor or shame? Roared Jarishan. You think you can talk about honor and dignity? The four of you joined forces against big brother Yun Tian. Why didn't you talk about honor and dignity then? Are you even a sovereign sprout? What right do you have to say such things? Retorted Guo Ran. But even as he said this, he led everyone in retreat. Branches continued to sprout out of the ground thanks to Chu Yao and Lu Ruayan. Lu Ruayan had also summoned her true form, and through their efforts, Jarishan was unable to effectively unleash any of his power. Jarishan only had time to curse them once again when Wilde caught up and knocked him to the ground. Guo Ran, who had been hiding amongst the branches, immediately struck, slashing Jarishan's neck. However, this time, Jarishan was on guard and blocked with the heaven-suppressing dragon coiling rod. As a result, Guo Ran was sent flying, coughing up blood. A large nick was left in his saber. That damage aggrieved him. Once a divine item was damaged like this, it harmed the connection to its runes and seriously affected its power. However, even though Jarishan had been on guard against Guo Ran, he wasn't ready for Yu Zifeng. The latter accurately landed his sword on Jarishan's neck, sending his head flying once more. The head was immediately grabbed by countless branches and pulled away from Jarishan. Ha ha ha, another one. Guo Ran charged out and sucked it into his astral space with an excited cry. Three heads of immortal metal, added to their previous gains. It was enough to forge a completely new set of armor for the entire Dragonblood Legion. Guo Ran also had quite a few other ores that he could later purify to increase the quality of this immortal metal. Thinking of how the Dragonblood warriors could sweep through the Martial Heaven continent in a new set of armor, Guo Ran was incredibly excited. He had an urge to hug Jarishan and kiss him a few times. This was a wonderful enemy who could make them rich. Having lost his third head, Jarishan felt like he was going crazy. The worst thing was that after they were lost, the impact on his source energy caused his aura to drop. He was no longer in his peak condition. He had sucked away all the immortal gold in the ground below this battlefield. Unless he found another place to replenish his energy, he would essentially be burning away his source energy if he continued fighting. You lowly bandits. How did Long Chen raise you all into such brigands cursed Jarishan? He surprisingly gave up on attacking the Dragonblood warriors and charged back at Wild. He would rather fight Wilde directly than these bandits. He was finally afraid of them. If he wanted to escape this predicament, the first thing to do was knock down Wilde. With him there, he couldn't do anything to the Dragonblood Warriors, and sooner or later all his immortal metal would be stolen. Jarishan was truly unlucky to have spent a lifetime fighting against people who never even thought about stealing his immortal metal. Upon returning to the Divine Families, he was viewed as a juicy piece of meat. Boom. Suddenly, an explosion came from the distance. Long Chen came flying out of the darkness, giving up on Yi Ming and charging at the altar. You only noticed now? Too late. Yi Ming's voice came from within the darkness. His body slowly appeared, and he was forming several hand seals. Novaloon.com The altar quivered. The dragon corpses forming the altar began to uncoil and roar. Millions of poison dragons were being revived. Bookmark. Chapter 2513 Wind Moon Severs Twilight and Dawn Millions of poison dragons were revived. Their roar shook people's ears, and sound waves unfurled throughout heaven and earth, making people feel like their eardrums would shatter. Ha ha ha, Long Chen, you're too naive. Did you really think you had stopped me? Now everything is too late. 
I finished the altar ceremony while fighting you, and this giant tree's final trace of life energy has been used to revive this army of the dead, the heaven-devouring black armor cores, the generals, and now even the poison dragon army have all been revived. Next will be the four great divine generals and then finally the heaven-devouring fiend king. None of it can be stopped. All your struggles are meaningless. To tell the truth, I really don't want to kill you. I'd like you to live to personally see my dead army destroying the foolish righteous path of the martial heaven continent when I return. Yi Ming laughed arrogantly. Just at that moment, the army of poison dragons charged toward the dragon blood legion. Guo Ran jumped in shock and temporarily gave up on Jarishan. He formed up the legion to handle the poison dragons. Gu Yang charged out first, sending the first poison dragon flying with his spear. However, just as he sent it flying, its tail whipped over. Gu Yang twisted his spear to block it. Watch out. The poison dragon's tail suddenly shot out a bone spur that pierced Gu Yang's shoulder. A loud scream rang out. The dragon blood warriors were shocked. Gu Yang was a captain of the Dragon Blood Legion. Even if his arm was cut off, he wouldn't even frown. Along with the scream, Gu Yang was clenching his teeth and veins were throbbing on his forehead. The pain he was under was clearly unimaginable. Gu Yang pulled out the bone spur. Black blood gushed out along with a disgusting stench. The bone spur was three feet long and so sharp that it had even pierced Gu Yang's armor. Gu Yang hastily consumed an anti-poison pill. However, in just a short time, his entire face turned black. This poison was truly fierce. Everyone, be careful. Focus on defense. Called out Xia Chen as he hastily switched the formation. Lu Ruian spread her branches, forming a giant barrier. Those poison dragons were blocked by the branches when they charged in. They were unable to spread their wings freely and struggled against the branches. They then spat out some kind of black mist. Even Luruian's branches, which were as tough as divine items, were corroded by that mist. Fortunately, Luruian was an undying willow. Even as her branches were broken, new ones formed. As they struggled, the same venomous bone spur shot out of their tails at the dragon blood legion. This time, Sword Chi shot out, blasting apart the bone spurs. Having learned how dangerous they were, the dragon blood warriors did not dare to be touched by them. Gu Yang suddenly tossed a bomb through Lu Ruian's barrier. It flew into the midst of the poison dragons and exploded. What Guo Ran hadn't expected was for a large mass of them to be killed. Their bodies were easily pierced by the shrapnel inside the bomb. Their defensive power was surprisingly weak. What's going on? Isn't the dragon race always praised for having the strongest physical bodies? Everyone was stunned. The dragons that they had encountered all had terrifying physical bodies. What they didn't know was that due to pursuing absolute killing power, the poison dragon's physical bodies had regressed. In return, they had managed to evolve poison fangs and spurs to handle their opponents. It was precisely due to abandoning the tough physical bodies that the dragon race was proudest of and using poison as their greatest support that they were viewed as a humiliation by the dragon race. In the dragon race's eyes, using poison was a shameful thing, let alone the proud dragon race. Even amongst the human race, using poison was considered lowly conduct. Such people were looked down upon, so the dragon race especially could not accept such a thing. They would kill the poison dragons on sight. Although the poison dragon race had no backbone and depended on other experts to survive, their poison was truly powerful. Beasts in the same realm as them were not their match. Amongst their poison claws, poison fangs, and poison spurs, the poison glands within their fangs were actually the strongest. Being bitten by them was usually fatal. As for this particular species of the poison dragon race, the long-tailed poison dragons, they were an especially difficult kind to deal with due to their poison glands being split into three kinds. A stabbing pain poison, a paralyzing poison, and a corroding poison. The spurs on their tails were specialized for causing pain as they fully stimulated the pain nerves. That pain could cause even large beasts to die. Those beasts would scream for half a day while their bodies twitched uncontrollably. The fact that Gu Yang had not fainted from the pain was a testament to his powerful will. In exchange for this powerful poison, the long-tailed poison dragons had lost their powerful defenses, making that their weakness. 
Kuo Ran's probing blow instantly exposed that weakness. As long as they didn't get close to the poison dragons, they were nothing to be afraid of. Big Sister Wanur, you'll be the sword, while we'll be the shield. Mingyu, keep an eye on Jarishan. It seems he's plotting something against us. We'll distance ourselves from him. Kuo Ran quickly gave orders. He had noticed that Jarishan, who had intentionally created distance from them, was now slowly getting closer again. He was definitely trying to take advantage of this timing. All right. Tang Wan Er nodded. She formed hand seals, and the void began to tremble. A powerful breeze erupted as Tang Wan Er's manifestation appeared. Wind moon severs twilight and dawn. Tang Wan Er said the name of her manifestation out loud. A crescent moon appeared within her manifestation. The crescent moon illuminated the night sky with a pure and gentle light. Everything became tranquil. However, when that crescent moon began to slowly spin, countless crescent blades shot out like a furious sea into the world. The tranquility was shattered, and spastime was thrown into chaos. That crescent moon began to spin faster and faster until it no longer appeared to be a crescent moon, but a full moon due to how fast it was spinning. A transparent blade appeared in Tang Wan'er's hand. The crescent blades behind her rumbled as millions of them were unleashed upon the poison dragons. The crescent blades were like a sea crashing down upon them. Any of them touched by the blades were sliced through. They were quickly cut into nothing more than dust. Wan'er has actually fully awakened her manifestation and obtained its true name. The distant Long Chen was surprised and delighted. Tang Wan'er's combat power was terrifying. But the regretful thing was that the wind element inheritances on the martial heaven continent were extremely sparse, resulting in her never having a master to guide her. However, there was no need to question the terror of the wind element. Having awakened the true name of her manifestation, Tang Wan'er was finally displaying her own light. With Tang Wan'er taking the lead, the dragon blood legion slaughtered the poison dragons. They were unstoppable with a sea of wind blades sweeping through the battlefield. HMPH, even if that girl has awakened her manifestation's true name. So what? There are millions of poison dragons here. Even if she exhausts herself to death, she can't kill them all. Aren't you getting happy too soon? Sneered Yi Ming. Long Chen looked at him. Idiot. Did you specialize in studying how to talk stupid in your last life? Everyone within the Dragon Blood Legion is powerful in their own right. No one can underestimate them. Anyone who has died a miserable death. But don't worry, it won't be long before you understand yourself. Lightning flashed beneath Long Chen's feet, and he charged toward the center of the altar. As the poison dragons left the altar, it revealed a platform. That platform had the heaven-devouring fiend king's corpse seated on it. Below the platform were four large armored experts. They were kneeling toward the altar. Their bodies had been covered by the poison dragons previously, but now they were exposed. Yi Ming's figure flickered, and he blocked Long Chen's path, sneering. You want to break the altar? I won't let you do as you please. Who says I need your permission? Sneered Long Chen, attacking with Evil Moon. Yi Ming was knocked back by Long Chen. In terms of brute power, he wasn't a match for Long Chen. Furthermore, his dark energy was unable to counter Evil Moon. Nothing he could do was effective against Long Chen. Long Chen forced Yi Ming back repeatedly, getting closer and closer to the platform. Once he was there, he kicked one of the four armored experts. These four should be the four divine generals beneath the fiend king that Yi Ming had mentioned. Although they were already dead, he could sense that they were existences above the nether passage realm. Boom. The head that Long Chen kicked didn't budge. Instead, Long Chen felt like he had kicked a star, and sharp pain made him stagger. It's useless. The altar is protected by a formation. Your power is unable to break its defenses, said Yi Ming. Idiot. If it was really useless, you would be letting me waste my energy instead of trying to stop me. You've already exposed your weak point, said Long Chen. HMPH. I'm just warning you out of the kindness of my heart. If you want to go. Just keep wasting your energy, sneered Yi Ming, attacking with his jagged sword. Long Chen began to test the altar as he blocked Yi Ming's attacks. He found that it really was as Yi Ming had said. There was a mysterious energy protecting the altar, preventing him from breaking it. You're already dead, so why revive? 
That's far too much effort. I'll give you a proper cremation after trying several times. Long Chen suddenly sent Ji Ming flying. Enraged, a ball of flames appeared in Long Chen's hand, and he sent it flying toward the altar. Upon seeing that ball of flames, Yi Ming's expression instantly became ugly. Chapter 2514 Soul Assimilation Reincarnation The ball of flames that Long Chen had tossed out was the karmic hell flames from purgatory. They ignited the altar. Curiously, the red karmic flames actually began to burn blue after igniting the altar. Yi Ming's expression instantly changed. The karmic hell flames had spread to cover the entire altar. He then condensed his dark energy into a hand, and it fell on the flames to extinguish them. However, when the hand covered the altar, Yi Ming was shocked. The hand was instantly incinerated. Yi Ming hastily retreated, finally a bit afraid. If he hadn't severed his connection to the hand just now, the flames would have continued and reached him. He had experienced the karmic hell flames once before. They had almost taken his life back then. However, the karmic hell flames here didn't seem to be condensed into a magical art. Despite that, he had an intense feeling of mortal danger when his hand touched them. What kind of flames are these? Yi Ming roared, unable to maintain his calm. He had suffered the karmic hell flames twice now. The first time was when Long Chen had used them in the world extermination flame lotus and heavily injured him. This time, the feeling of danger when he had attacked them was even greater than with the flame lotus. He was unable to comprehend how Long Chen could control these flames. They're called karmic hell flames, and they come from the netherworld. As their name implies, karmic flames burn the karma contained in all things. The heaven-devouring fiend king's karma was ignited. And you dared to try to extinguish them? You're fortunate that you weren't instantly burned to death upon touching the burning karma of the Fiend King, said Long Chen with an evil laugh. Long Chen could not fully control the karmic hell flames, or perhaps he should say that Huo Linger was unable to fully control them. He could only let them burn where he placed them. The karmic hell flames were something that transcended ordinary laws. It didn't matter what kind of life form it was they could not escape the burning of their karma. Not even a god could do so. This was related to the cycle of karma. The heaven-devouring fiend king's body was being burned, representing his karma being burned. Just now, Yi Ming had tried to touch that burning karma. If he hadn't severed his connection to that hand just now, the karma would have followed and consumed him. Yi Ming began to sweat. He had almost died to an unremarkable ball of flames. The blue flames flickered. They weren't intense but gave off a bizarre feeling. It was as if they could be blown out with a breath of air. But no one dared to touch them. Not even Long Chen. The karmic hell flames were just the seed. Which was now attached to the heaven devouring fiend king. The fuel was all the karma accumulated by it during its lifetime. So touching it would be fatal. Although Yi Ming didn't fully understand the true power of the karmic hell flames. He knew that if this continued. The Fiend King and his four divine generals would become impossible to revive. The little bit of life energy they were extracting from underground was unable to keep up with the burning of the karmic flames. His plans were instantly thrown awry. Suddenly, Yi Ming tossed out a formation disc behind him. It rapidly expanded into a giant transportation formation. The formation lit up, and one group of corrupt experts after another appeared, using some special means. Yi Ming was pulling in the corrupt path's disciples. Long Chen didn't know what Yi Ming was planning, but it was definitely not for the corrupt experts to come pay their respects to him. He slashed Evil Moon at the formation disc, seal the heavens, lock the earth, invert the cosmos. Yi Ming was prepared, and his figure appeared in Long Chen's path. His manifestation spread to cover the formation disc. He actually put down his jagged sword to form hand seals. His body became illusory. Long Chen's attack exploded in another area of Yi Ming's black manifestation. Having been displaced by this strange technique. What kind of damn technique is this? Long Chen was startled. Yi Ming truly did have many bizarre magical arts that he had never seen before. It's a kind of dark divine ability. He can move your attacks elsewhere. There's practically no way to counter it. Don't worry though. He cannot move during this time and the time is limited. He can only last a few more seconds before he becomes solid once more. At that time, 
the technique will naturally be released, said Evil Moon. As Evil Moon said, Yi Ming's body gradually became solid. Long Chen attacked again. This time, the jagged sword appeared in Yi Ming's hand once more, and he was sent flying. Disciples of the corrupt path, hear my orders. Activate the soul assimilation reincarnation grand formation. Send your life energy into the altar to revive the fiend king, shouted Yi Ming. Those corrupt experts that he had summoned still didn't even know what was going on, but they listened to his orders. Blood-colored flowers began to appear on their foreheads. Following the appearance of those flowers, their blood chi flew away, as if being summoned by the altar. Yi Ming is sacrificing their lives to hasten the revival of the fiend king, warned Evil Moon. Long Chen didn't need Evil Moon's warning. He could tell just by looking. Yi Ming was truly ruthless. Unable to extinguish the karmic flames, he actually began to sacrifice others. It seemed that he didn't care about those disciples' lives. Over 500,000 corrupt experts had been summoned by him. He had clearly arranged this in advance. Yi Ming truly had many backups prepared. Just at that moment, divine light shot out of the altar and enveloped those disciples. It was unknown if this was something else Yi Ming had done in order to protect them before they were killed. Although there were some accidents, everything is still within my control. Long Chen, no matter how you struggle, you can't beat me. I won't bother wasting time with you either. Yi Ming retreated into the protective light of the altar as well. The karmic flames continued to burn despite the support of the corrupt experts, but they were growing weaker and weaker. Karmic hell flames could not be extinguished by external power, but Yi Ming was strengthening the Fiend King's life force to suppress the karmic flames. Long Chen, continue burning them, said Evil Moon. It's useless. I can't really control the karmic hell flames, and I can't bring out their full power. I can only have them ignite the Fiend King's karma but not his actual body. Even if I try to spread more karmic hell flames, it won't stop them. Long Chen looked around. He saw the giant tree, the endless army of the heaven-devouring black armor cores, and the long-tailed poison dragons. All I can do is have these karmic flames resonate with the karmic hell flames within my body. I'll use my spiritual strength as fuel, but that will cost me my ability to fight. Furthermore, by myself, my own spiritual strength won't be enough to have a good effect. I'll need the help of my friends. What are you going to do? I'll send out the distress signal for everyone on my side to come help. But there are too many things in the way right now. So I'm going to help clear up the obstacles. Long Chen raised his hand. A flame lotus blossomed. And sacred chanting filled heaven and earth. As if gods were murmuring. Long Chen's body slowly rose through the air. The world turned red from the chanting. And flame runes slowly appeared in the air before flying toward Long Chen. The flame lotus grew larger and larger. At the same time, spheres appeared on top of the petals. When 54 spheres had appeared on top of the lotus, it quivered once. Every sphere dimmed slightly, and then a seventh set of nine spheres appeared. The aura of the flame lotus instantly soared when the seventh set of spheres appeared. For the first time, Long Chen had reached the seven star world extermination flame lotus. Based on Long Chen's previous technique, his limit was the six-star world extermination flame lotus. Any more and the slightest fluctuation would blow him up. However, by relying on the heaven-shrouding mirror's divination ability, he had managed to see how to disperse a portion of the first six stars to condense the seventh star. In truth, when the seventh star was first born, the amount of energy of the lotuses was still equal to the six stars before it appeared. So this trick did not have high requirements for energy. It could be likened to climbing uphill. Before this, Long Chen was forced to reach the top in one step. But now he had a set of stairs he could climb. It was only when his energy was slowly sent into the seventh star that the aura of the lotus soared once more. When it reached the limit, the seven star's energy was extracted to condense the eighth. With this trick, everything became much easier. His six star limit was instantly broken. When the eighth star appeared, the aura of the lotus shook the giant tree above Long Chen. Flames whirled toward him, igniting space. It was as if the entire world had been set ablaze. What kind of magical art is that? Within the protective light, Yi Ming stared in shock at the giant flame lotus. He was finally truly terrified. 
At this time, even Feng Fei, Mo Nian, Wild, and Jia Rishan stopped their fights to stare in shock. All they saw was Long Chen holding a giant flame lotus. It was as if a flame god had descended to destroy the entire world. Chapter 2515 Nine Star World Extermination Flame Lotus A divine light of annihilation caused the void to shudder. The Brahma divine diagram faded away as the Pill Fairy and Yan Tian ceased their battle. The Pill Fairy stared in shock at Long Chen. Hearing the chanting in the air, she was filled with disbelief. How is this possible? Why is this third volume of the Nirvana scripture in his hands? This version of the scripture can only be passed down through the mouths of the gods. How can someone who has blasphemed the gods obtain a god's inheritance? On the martial heaven continent, the only one capable of receiving the third volume of the Nirvana scripture was her. Not even her father, Yu Ziaoyan, could obtain it, nor any other past valley masters. Theoretically, she should be the only one capable of controlling the third volume of the Nirvana scripture. But most importantly, Long Chen's third volume was different from hers. It seemed completely limitless. Only the Nirvana scripture was capable of controlling all flames in the world. Metal, wood, water, fire, earth, beast flames, demonic flames, earth flames. There were millions of varieties. But control over the third volume of the Nirvana scripture meant control over all these flames. Whether it was the fire element in the air, the magma underground or the beast flames within the bodies of living creatures. Unbeknownst to the pill fairy, even her nirvana scripture was useless in the netherworld. But Long Chen had managed to use it to summon the flames within the Nethergood's palace. The sacred chanting resounded throughout heaven and earth, filling the starfield divine world. It's senior apprentice brother Long Chen's voice. He's calling us. Experts of the righteous path heard it and rushed over in the direction it was coming from. As the pillar of the righteous path, they all went to assist him. More and more of the righteous path's experts began to gather. Let's go. Our future leader is definitely with Long Chen as well. The experts of the Xuan beasts also rushed over. A great distance away, there was another giant tree. Beneath the tree was an army of the Luo spirit race's warriors. They were already combat ready, and their eyes were closed in meditation. As soon as they heard that chanting, their eyes flew open and they stood up. An elder with emerald wings on his back also stood. This person was the great prophet of the Luo spirit race. Warriors of the Luo spirit race. The call for vengeance is summoning us. How many years? How many generations have we dreamed of taking back our mother tree? Of taking back our territory? Of taking back our home? So many of our warriors died in that battle. Their eyes closed with hatred and resentment. How many of us have bitterly endured until we turned to dust without seeing any hope of reclaiming our home? Today, the time for vengeance has come. The prophesied sun has come. His voice is the signal for our attack. Warriors of the Luo spirit race, let us take back our mother tree alongside the prophesied sun. The prophet's voice was hoarse with emotion and contained a determination to fight until death. His sentiment was echoed through the millions of warriors of the Luo spirit race. Reclaim the mother tree, reclaim the mother tree, reclaim the mother tree, the earth suddenly burst apart, the giant tree they were under actually rose out of the ground along with the earth covering its roots, move out, the giant life spirit god shot off in Long Chen's direction, the warriors on top of it had electric gazes with killing intent surging out, amongst them was a man and woman who were filled with anticipation, beside them was a golden scale blue eye eagle. This man and woman were La Wei and Qi Li. This new steed of theirs had been given to La Wei by Long Chen. While giving it to La Wei, he had expressed that he had no intentions toward Qi Li. Long Chen had given this steed to La Wei to give him an additional thing to be proud of, so he didn't need to feel inferior being with Qi Li. Hearing that Long Chen was the prophesied son, the two of them were both excited, especially Qi Li. She had actually once saved this prophesied son. That made her feel heroic. We're finally going to fight alongside the prophesied son. Even if we die, we have to reclaim the mother tree. Chi Li clenched her fists. A determined light in her eyes. The void continued to rumble as if thunder was crackling. The void was twisting so badly that it had turned into a hazy sea of red. Flames raged, whirled, and exploded. It was as if the apocalypse had come. Suddenly, all the chaos vanished without a trace. 
The petals of Long Chen's giant flame lotus were now fully covered with stars. The nine petals had nine stars on each of them, a total of 81 stars that seemed to be invisibly linked together. They were arranged according to a mysterious sequence. It was as if they manifested the very nature of the world. Boss's World Extermination Flame Lotus. It has finally reached perfection. Xia Chen stuttered. He had spent a lifetime studying all kinds of diagrams. He had never seen such a diagram though. This was a divine diagram that represented the very origin of the world. It could manifest into 10,000 deos. What are you all staring for? Dig. Boss Song. Boss Li. Get digging. Big Sister Chu Yao. Great Heroine Ruian. Set up a barrier. We need 10 layers. No. At least 20 barriers. As many as possible. Xia Chen. Get the formation ready. If we die to boss's technique, it would be far too aggravating. Wild. What are you just staring for? Get over here. Shouted Guo Ran. Although they were a great distance away from Long Chen, Guo Ran didn't dare to be careless. This technique might very well be fatal. Little Trash Rishan. Why don't you come over and see if I can take some more gold? Once Wild ran over, Guo Ran saw Jarishan staring at them. He instantly knew that Jarishan was planning something. Most likely, he wanted to ruin their defenses. However, when Guo Ran tossed out some bait, Jarishan hesitated and gave up. He returned to his dwarf form and slammed the ground with his hands. The ground instantly turned golden, and he dove into a metal mountain. Big Brother Yun Tian. Big brother Mo Nian, come over here, beckoned Guo Ran. Mo Nian was already flying over. His physical body was not that powerful, so he didn't want to pay a huge price just to survive Long Chen's technique. On the other hand, Yun Tian shook his head. No need. You should hurry up so you don't make Long Chen worried. He's waiting for you. Yun Tian stood there with his sword in hand. Despite the blood on his white robes, he was indescribably suave. Guo Ran and the others couldn't help thinking that this was truly worthy of a sovereign son. This was the appearance of a true expert. At the same time, they knew that Yun Tian had spent a great deal of his energy chasing after Yi Ming and fighting off the others. The reason he didn't come was because he was worried about Feng Fei, the Pill Fairy, and Jia Rishan launching a sneak attack. Brace for impact. Guo Ran suddenly gave the order. The land swallowed the Dragon Blood Legion. At the same time, countless wooden stakes and roots covered the land. A layer of rock-like earth also protected them. Dozens of layers of defenses quickly formed, causing even Yun Tian to nod. Such a powerful defense was something even Jarishan and the others would need some time to get through. World Extermination Flame Lotus The giant flame lotus finally left Long Chen's hand and fell toward the altar. Fully activate the Soul Assimilation Reincarnation Grand Formation. Protect the altar roared Yi Ming. His dark energy flowed out to support the altar. Yi Ming was finally a bit regretful. He shouldn't have entered the altar's protection. If he had been fighting Long Chen, Long Chen wouldn't have had a chance to unleash this technique. He had been careless. In order to speed up the revival of the Fiend King, he had personally come to be the main pillar of the Soul Assimilation Reincarnation Grand Formation. He had thought that Long Chen wouldn't be able to do anything to the barrier's defenses. However, he hadn't expected Long Chen to display such a terrifying technique. It had surpassed the limits of the Nether Passage realm. However, regret was too late at this time. He could only unleash all his power to support the formation and resist Long Chen's attack. The void exploded, and fragments of spastime flew out as the lotus fell. The world was consumed by fire. Even the giant tree was ignited. Boom. The flame landed like a meteorite. The earth rapidly collapsed. And then the 81 stars began to surge with energy. Explode the 81 stars suddenly inflated. The energy within the lotus became unstable. Boom. A heaven-shaking explosion caused the entire star field divine world to shake. A giant mushroom cloud soared into the sky. And then a giant wave of fire unfurled. Chapter 2516 The Secret Beneath the Tree The Heaven Devouring Black Armor Cores and the Long-Tailed Poison Dragons were blasted to pieces and then burned to ash by the wave of fire. The Day-Night Furnace lit up, enveloping the Pill Fairy. Its runes shone and it began to rapidly spin. The Pill Fairy also began to chant, 
activating the third volume of the Nirvana scripture to block Long Chen's flames. Boom. Even the Danite furnace that had its full power unleashed was unable to endure the wave of fire and was sent flying. The pill fairy coughed up a mouthful of blood, and her chanting was cut off. She was sent tumbling back along with the Danite furnace. Why? Why can't I control these flames even with the third volume of the Nirvana scripture? Do they only recognize one master? But that's impossible. The pill fairy was completely bewildered as she flew back. Based on the records of the Nirvana scripture, other than the core flames of a person, no one could leave their own mark on other flames. Even the Nirvana scripture was limited by this. It could summon the power of all flames, but that was only summoning, not a spiritual imprint. After those flames were unleashed, they wouldn't have a mark on them. Therefore, it should have been possible to use the Nirvana scripture to control them again. However, those flames ignored her. It was as if they were still under Long Chen's control, or perhaps they only recognized Long Chen's Nirvana scripture and not hers. Filled with questions, the pill fairy vanished from view along with the Danite furnace. Yun Chien's sword flashed. As the wave of flames whistled toward him, he slashed his sword, causing the wave to part and pass by him. The whistling flames let out an ear-piercing sound when they struck his sword. His body was slowly pushed back. What a powerful attack. Even my sovereign sword wind runner can't block it. Yun Tian nodded in praise. This attack was even stronger than he had expected. This was only the result of being on the outer edge. If struck head on, there wouldn't be the slightest trace of him left. Suddenly, he heard explosions not that far away from him. Following the sound, he saw a giant sphere had been exposed underground. The rock-like sphere was covered by wooden stakes. The layers of rock and wood were being rapidly stripped away. Yun Tian was startled. This was the defense of the Dragonblood Legion. They had clearly hidden underground. So why had they suddenly run out again? Yun Tian then realized that Long Chen's world extermination flame lotus had stripped off all the earth covering them, resulting in them becoming exposed. The sphere was constantly exploding and shrinking. It seemed that there were only a few more layers before it was broken. Startled cries rang out from within. Yun Tian appeared in front of them, helping the Dragonblood Legion block a portion of the flames. Guo ran and the other side with relief. That bastard Long Chen. Why didn't he warn us? Is he trying to kill us? Raged Mo Nian. When the most powerful wave of flames had passed and there were only a few remnant flames hanging in the air, the Dragonblood warriors finally came out of their defense. As soon as they walked out, they felt like they were on a stove. The ground had been leveled and looked like it had been turned to red-hot steel. Looking around, they didn't see any trace of the heaven-devouring black armor cores or the poison dragons. Everything had been flattened, and the earth looked like mixed metal. Within this barren land, there was only a single towering tree remaining. This tree was covered in fire all the way to its crown that extended into the cosmos. However, curiously, despite the tree burning, no branches or dust rained down. It was as if the flames were not burning its body but an outer layer on top of it. Suddenly, the earth split open and a dwarf crawled out. When he looked around, he laughed. The heavens are helping me. They've actually refined all the immortal gold for me. Jarishan slammed his hands on the ground, and the metal land began to surge toward him. The land had been melted by Long Chen's flames, so the impurities were incinerated leaving only the strongest immortal and divine ores which had melted. The ground was filled with countless ores. The reason Jarishan was able to fight for so long was because he was drawing out the energy of those ores for himself. However, now all those ores had been fully exposed and purified for him. He could absorb them thousands of times faster than his original speed. The metal ground began to turn dark. As for Jarishan's aura, it instantly soared, almost reaching its peak. Go ahead and absorb it all. Once you're done, we'll take it from you. Guo Ran glared. Boom. Suddenly, an explosion caused everyone to jump. Yi Ming didn't die. Everyone hastily flew over to see a giant hole. The altar was still intact within that hole. The most shocked though were Chu Yao and Lu Ruian because they saw that the altar was embedded on a giant root like a malignant tumor. Now that a huge hole had been blasted open by Long Chen, they were able to see the truth. There were countless roots revealed, and cocoons were hanging from them. 
it was possible to see figures within the cocoons, looking like they were sleeping. There was a tube connected to their backs, and everyone could see drops of liquid slowly entering their bodies. What is going on? Guo Ran shivered. It's a reincarnation art most likely. The heaven-devouring fiend king's corpse was left out as bait, but the true goal was to have his subordinates absorb the tree's nutrients to revive. What a frightening race. They can also be classified as an undying race. The corpses outside were just to hide the true secret here, said Mo Nian. It seemed that Ji Ming's true goal was the life forms here. If it hadn't been for Long Chen's world extermination flame lotus, this secret would have still been unknown to them. As for the explosions ringing out, they were coming from Long Chen fighting Yi Ming. Yun Tian immediately joined in. Boom. Long Chen and Yi Ming exchanged blows and retreated at the same time. Seeing Yun Tian coming over, Yi Ming entered the barrier of the altar once more. Ha ha ha. Long Chen, I told you that you were wasting your energy. Now, do you believe it? This altar is linked to the tree's life, and this tree is the core of this world. Don't underestimate it just because it looks withered. Its core energy is something even ten experts above Nether Passage wouldn't be able to shake. Yi Ming laughed as if victory was already within his grasp. In truth, even Yi Ming had just become aware of how much life energy still remained within the tree. He really had been afraid that Long Chen's attack would be able to destroy the altar. Long Chen's attack had pushed the altar to its limit. However, just as it was about to crumble, it automatically absorbed the tree's life energy to block it. Yi Ming was delighted. The remnant life energy within the tree made it so that he didn't have to worry about anyone breaking the altar. He had only come out of its protection to test if Long Chen had weakened after unleashing such a big move. However, he found that Long Chen's power hadn't dropped. There was no way to take advantage of him. That was why he immediately hid within his turtle shell once more upon seeing Yun Tian coming. Now it's troublesome. There's no way to calculate how many life forms are hidden beneath the roots. Those aren't dead spirits. Once they're revived, they'll be true warriors. Big brother Yun Tian, do you have a way to handle them? Asked Long Chen. Yun Tian shook his head. I was supposed to be the prophesied son with the solution to this problem. But now it's you. The only one who can solve this predicament is you. Long Chen now recalled how the Luo spirit race had given him the bone tile. At that moment, his position with Yun Tian had been switched. This battlefield should have been led by Yun Tian, but one miscalculation had caused everything to change. All right, I only have one more option. Protect me. Long Chen suddenly sat in the air and began to form hand seals. The ball of karmic hell flames within the primal chaos space began to rage. Long Chen's divine ring lit up. The position relating to the divine gate star blazed with light. Suddenly, the flames on the altar that had almost been extinguished began to explode and burn more intensely than ever. Yi Ming was startled. He shouted to Feng Fei, Jarishan, and the pill fairy who were flying back. Quick, kill Long Chen. Bookmark. Chapter 2517 Little Pretty Boy? Long Chen's soul energy began to circulate. Using the karmic hell flames within his primal chaos space as the connection, he formed a spiritual bridge with the karmic flames burning the altar. An image of a dragon appeared on his forehead. That was Huo Linger's dragon form. A ball of flames burned around her. Using the Nine Star World Extermination Flame Lotus had sucked away almost all her energy. She was no longer able to show her true form outside. However, she could recuperate within the primal chaos space. Although Huo Linger had not absorbed the karmic hell flames, there was now a slight connection between the two. There was also a connection between the karmic hell flames he had released upon the altar and the karmic hell flames in the primal chaos space. By using that connection, he was able to feed his spiritual strength to the karmic flames on the altar. Those flames intensified. Black marks began to appear on the altar as if it was being incinerated. Yi Ming began to panic. If this continued, the altar would be too damaged to ever revive the heaven-devouring fiend king again. Yi Ming's call made Feng Fei, the pill fairy, and Jia Rishan raise their weapons against Long Chen. In his current state, he could not be disturbed by others. He couldn't even afford the distraction that would cut off his connection to the karmic flames. 
Then he wouldn't be able to form that connection again because Yi Ming would not give him a second chance. Dragonblood Legion. Full defense. Sixfold Heavenly Resistance Formation Xia Chen took out a formation disc, and light began to shine on top of it. With Long Chen at the center, a light appeared above, below, behind, in front, left, and right of him. Those six spots then radiated light, forming a giant sphere protecting Long Chen. It was like a star. The Dragonblood Warriors began to split up, entering the giant sphere and standing within certain places in the light forming a curious protective sphere. I'll keep handling Feng Fei Mo Nian took a deep breath and went to stop Feng Fei. After fighting her for so long, he was profoundly aware of how powerful she was. Despite using his full power, he was unable to get an advantage over her. Now he understood how powerful the Divine Family Sovereign Sprouts were. Little Dwarf. Let's continue. Wild stuffed his face with meat and then charged at Jarishan. Yun Tian also attacked. His sword unleashed a wave of sparkling divine light that illuminated the sky. With a single step, he appeared in front of the Pill Fairy. The Danite Furnace floated above the Pill Fairy's head, holding the Brahma Divine Diagram. She summoned divine light that swept toward Yun Tian like a river of stars. I won't fall for the same move twice. Yun Shian's sword suddenly pierced toward a certain spot in the sky. Boom. The Brahma Divine Diagram shook intensely. The river of stars vanished. This time, the Brahma Divine Diagram failed to suck Yun Tian into its world. The Pill Fairy was shocked. But just at that moment, Yun Shian's sword was pointed at her head. His sword appeared slow but was actually quick as lightning. Good sword technique. Yu Zifeng couldn't help nodding his head. Of everyone here. Only Yu Zifeng was able to see just how profound this sword technique of Yun Shian's was. The Pill Fairy's expression changed. She took seven steps back, every step just barely avoiding Yun Shian's sword. As the two of them moved, it revealed the foundation of a true expert. On the eighth step, the Pill Fairy finally had a chance to strike back. The Danite Furnace smashed down, and sparks flew as it blocked Yun Shian's sword. After finally stabilizing her position, the Pill Fairy realized that the seven steps she had resulted in her crossing thousands of miles and leaving the battlefield. Yun Shian's attack had clearly contained some kind of spatial law. As expected of a sovereign son, the Pill Fairy stared coldly at Yun Tian, filled with shock. When Yun Tian had been chasing down Yi Ming, she, Jarishan, and Feng Fei hadn't been using their full power against him. Their goal had really been to benefit from their fight. Yi Ming was the one enduring most of Yun Shian's attacks. They just needed to make sure that he didn't die. It was only when he was in danger that they would interfere. They had exhausted the majority of Yun Shian's energy on the way here. They had thought that he would be out of energy. However, in her battle with him, she had found that the more energy he used up, the longer the rest of his energy seemed to last him. It was absolutely bizarre. Even within the Brahma Divine Diagram, with absolute advantage, the Pill Fairy hadn't been able to defeat him. Now, without the advantage of the home territory of the Brahma Divine Diagram, Yun Tian was even more terrifying. You overpraise me. Your double god seals have already formed. To become a god in the future will be effortless for you. If you didn't have mercy, I wouldn't have been able to last. Why don't the two of us come to a pause and just watch? Yun Tian suddenly sheathed his sword and smiled at the Pill Fairy. The Pill Fairy was startled. What do you mean? I'm saying that you don't attack Long Chen, and I won't help Long Chen. The two of us can just watch. How's that? Are you saying that you'll just watch even if Long Chen is going to die? The Pill Fairy narrowed her eyes. Of course. He is the main character of this place. I can only help him. My mission is to help him block one powerful opponent. The ultimate victory or defeat is up to him. So as long as you don't interfere, I won't interfere either, said Yun Tian. I know your power is not limited to just this. Fine, I will trust that a sovereign son will not be a little person who breaks his word. We can watch together. The Pill Fairy put away the Danite Furnace and the Brahma Divine Diagram, as well as her manifestation. Many thanks. Yun Tian cupped his fist slightly. There was a hard-to-describe nobility about his actions that involuntarily inspired reverence. The Pill Fairy nodded. She no longer put up any guard against him. 
The sovereigns were supreme existences. As a sovereign's son, Yan Tian definitely wouldn't sneak attack her. Seeing the two of them stop fighting and return to the battlefield together, everyone fighting was shocked. What was going on? Yu Kingsuan, have you been seduced by that little pretty boy? What are you doing? Kill him, roared Jarishan. This roar made a layer of frost appear on the pill fairy's face. Shut your dog mouth, or I don't mind changing sides and killing a dislikable dwarf. You, Jarishan was infuriated but didn't dare to say another word. He really was afraid of the pill fairy switching sides. He was no fool. Seeing that Yan Tian was also not fighting, he could guess what was going on. Ignoring the pill fairy, he smashed the heaven suppressing dragon coiling rod at Wild and knocked him back. The two of them were originally evenly matched, but due to the world extermination flame lotus exposing and refining the land's immortal metal for him to absorb, he had rapidly recovered the energy he had spent Novaloon.com on the other hand. Wild had eaten some meat just now, but he hadn't managed to fully recover. Wild's power was gradually starting to fall in comparison to Jarishan's. Wild roared furiously and charged back. However, Jarishan still managed to charge over to the Dragonblood Legion's defenses. All of you laughable ants can die. Jarishan forced Wild back once more and smashed his rod at the Dragonblood Warriors. You think you can sneer at the Dragonblood Legion? Have a look at our true power. Guo Ran's voice rang out. Suddenly, every Dragonblood Warrior's position shifted. Guo Ran appeared in front of Jarishan and slashed his dual sabers at him. Even an ant dares to be arrogant? How laughable. Jarishan sneered, refusing to believe that Guo Ran could receive his attack. Boom. Jarishan's rod smashed into Guo Ran's sabers. However, curiously, his full power rapidly dispersed. The spherical formation that the Dragonblood warriors were in sunk, resulting in the majority of his power dissipating. The sphere suddenly swelled back, and an irresistible power sent Jarishan flying. What Jarishan was shocked. The power that had bounced him back was his own metal energy. In other words, the Dragonblood Legion's formation was capable of absorbing his energy to strike back at him. As Jarishan was blown back, he forgot that Wild was behind him. Wild immediately smacked the back of Jarishan's head with the door bolt. Jarishan's head was completely deformed, and he was sent flying back to the Dragonblood Legion. I don't want his head. I want a leg. The sound of a sword unsheathing rang out. Mixed in with Guo Ran's shout, a ray of sword chi shot out of the formation. The sword chi accurately landed on Jarishan's leg. However, his leg was too thick, and the sword chi failed to fully cut off his leg. However, his leg now drooped. Just at that moment, countless willow branches shot out like tentacles, wrapping around that leg and pulling fiercely. The prepared Guo Ran swung his sabers. With an explosive sound, the leg was torn off. From the moment Guo Ran sent him flying back to Wild's door bolt, Yu Zifeng's sword slash, Lu Ruian's pull, and then Guo Ran's follow up, only the time for a blink of an eye had passed. Jarishan's mind was still muddled from being struck in the head by Wild. By the time he reacted, one of his legs had left his body. You damn bandits, you won't have good deaths. Jarishan roared furiously, gnashing his teeth so hard that they creaked. He charged at the Dragonblood Legion once more. Chapter 2518 Secret Transaction Wow, he's coming again. Get another leg. Guo Ran cried out excitedly. Due to his excitement, he didn't notice that while he had managed to cut off Jarishan's leg, another egg-sized nick had appeared in his saber. The runes of his saber were no longer complete. Due to the damage, another blow like that might cause it to shatter. Jarishan, calm down. Suddenly. A streak of light flew over, blocking Jarishan. It was Feng Fei. While fighting against Mo Nian, Feng Fei still kept an eye on the overall battlefield. Seeing that Jarishan was consumed with rage, she stopped him. In this state, he was at far too great of a disadvantage. She understood Jarishan too well. Someone without a brain would definitely go crazy after losing a leg. Get out of the way. I'll kill them no matter what roared Jarishan his expression frighteningly sinister. Divine light flew out of Feng Fei's hand, condensing into chains that bound Jarishan. That's not worth it. Calm down, or I'll use the divine seal to send you out. Jarishan was fuming, but he gradually calmed down. 
He pointed at Guo Ran and cursed. You little fucker. Just wait. I will definitely tear you to pieces. Yan Tian suddenly curled his lips. A grand sovereign sprout was actually cursing like a vixen on the street. It seemed that Guo Ran really had some skill. Guo Ran was not some saint who would just sit there and allow himself to be cursed without saying anything back. However, a cultured man like him wouldn't bring up Jarishan seniors or women in his family. Instead, Guo Ran's manifestation appeared. Four balls of light were present. Three heads and one leg. As expected of Jarishan, this sincerity, this gift giving, I'm sure you'd feel bad if I didn't accept these gifts. Guo Ran's pleased voice was so infuriating that he could easily anger someone to death. Guo Ran was quite careful, only showing the three heads and one leg within his manifestation. He didn't dare to take them out directly for fear that Jarishan would have a secret technique to take them back. Clapping sounds rang out as Mo Nian came over. He raised a thumb. Well said. And it wasn't just the words. The way you said them was also perfect. Combined with your expression, it was perfectly done. You're too courteous. Brother, I see that you're also a man of culture and refinement. Your comments are perfectly on point. Guo Ran made a big show of cupping his fists in thanks. Guo Ran's nonsense was just to irritate Jarishan, but it had been praised into a delightful sonnet by Mo Nian. Not better than yours. You are overpraising me. Mo Nian and Guo Ran bounced off each other, infuriating Jarishan even more. I, I, pfft. Jarishan suddenly coughed up golden blood. It could be seen just what kind of peak his anger had reached. What a vulgar and unrefined person. You're actually pissing yourself in front of everyone? Shameful. Mo Nian shook his head. Jarishan was one step away from exploding in anger. He was unable to suppress his wrath in front of Mo Nian and Guo Ran's provocations. It felt like if he didn't vent somehow, he would die. What are you doing? Kill Long Chen, shouted Yi Ming from within the barrier, his expression just as twisted as Jarishan's. Black Chi was gushing out from behind him as he tried to support the altar against Long Chen's karmic hell flames. However, they were not so easily suppressed. He was attempting to use the corrupt path's disciples' life energy in addition to the Great Tree's energy to revive the Fiend King as quickly as possible. That process was like filling a pool of water. Only once it was full would the Fiend King revive. But Long Chen's flames were like a hole at the bottom of the pool, causing the water to flow away. The life energy of the altar was constantly being incinerated. As a result, they had reached a stalemate. No matter how Yi Ming tried. He couldn't progress any further. Furthermore, he didn't dare to be careless. If he stopped the life energy pouring inside, Long Chen's karmic hell flames would reach the core of the altar. Once the altar was damaged, everything would be for naught. Yi Ming saw that the pill fairy and Yan Tian had made a sea sapphire, and he had guessed as to the conditions. However, upon seeing the idiot Jarishan actually quibbling with the dragon blood warriors, he was infuriated. The important matters are more pressing. We'll attack from both sides to break their formation. Feng Fei sent a message to Jarishan and then attacked Mo Nian. As for Jarishan, he attacked Wild. Wild, send him over. I'm still missing one leg and two arms for a perfect set, shouted Guo Ran. Jarishan almost fell from the sky. His fury transformed into limitless power as he repeatedly attacked Wild. Careful, Mo Nian suddenly shouted. It was unknown what ability Feng Fei had just used, but she managed to absorb the power of his arrow and then pounced on the Dragon Blood Legion's formation. Just at that moment, Jarishan also knocked Wild aside. The heaven suppressing dragon coiling staff erupted with divine light. Block. Xia Chen's shout came from the core of the formation. Everyone's manifestations instantly linked together, and the sphere's interior became indistinct. Guo Ran and Gu Yang appeared on the two sides of the formation. All the Dragon Blood Legion's energy was concentrated on the two of them. Boom. Jarishan and Feng Fei were both blown back, but all the Dragon Blood warriors inside coughed up a mouthful of blood. The formation changed shape slightly but quickly returned to normal. The Dragon Blood warriors let out a powerful roar. Even two sovereign sprouts were unable to break their formation. This showed just how powerful they were. To unite 10,000 hearts has always just been an exaggerated saying. From ancient times to now, perhaps they are the only ones to achieve it. 
Yan Tian sighed. A strange light suddenly appeared in his eyes as he smiled. Not even a sovereign could do this. Perhaps. Come. Let's just keep injuring each other. I wonder who will last longer. Guo Ran's row rang out along with a metallic ringing. Despite appearing arrogant and domineering, Guo Ran was actually coughing up blood. Fortunately, no one could see through his armor. Feng Fei and Jarishan were both shocked. Just now, their combined blow had been perfect. Despite unleashing their full power together, the Dragon Blood Legion had still blocked them. Their blood was flipping inside of them. Feng Fei's arm was tingling. The Dragon Blood Legion's combination technique was truly powerful. No wonder Long Chen dared to focus entirely on Yi Ming. Don't fight. Come inside. Shouted Yi Ming. He was starting to feel like he couldn't last any longer. The 500,000 corrupt disciples were all pale. Too much of their life energy had been extracted. If this continued, they would not be able to stop the flames. The altar would be incinerated. Feng Fei and Jarishan immediately entered the formation of the altar. Jarishan cursed. Yi Ming, what the fuck are you doing? You were bragging all along about how Long Chen and the others would be easily caught together. But what about now? You've even managed to implicate us. If I had known you were so useless, I wouldn't have worked with you. Jarishan was too infuriated, and he cast his anger on Yi Ming carelessly. The humiliation of having three heads and one leg cut off was directly unleashed on Yi Ming. You're the one who can't even beat some dumb brat. What does having your limbs cut off have to do with me? If you had simply gotten rid of that brat, everything would have gone according to plan. Everything that has happened is your fault, and you have the face to blame others. Raged Yi Ming. The plan had been calculated. Yi Ming would handle Long Chen. The pill fairy would stall Yan Tian and Feng Fei would take charge of Mo Nian. That way, Jarishan could wipe out the Dragon Blood Legion. The plan had been for him to slowly kill them and take control of the battlefield, causing Long Chen to be distracted. If the Dragon Blood Legion was wiped out in one go, then Long Chen would have nothing tying him to this place, and he might run. As a result, the Dragon Blood Legion was the bait to keep Long Chen here and make sure he died. However, their plan was unable to keep up with the changes. Now, this plan seemed laughable, let alone killing the Dragon Blood Legion. Wild alone had managed to stop Jarishan. Furthermore, the Dragon Blood Legion had become Long Chen's crucial shield at this moment. Only Jarishan had failed his mission, and now he was blaming Yi Ming. Yi Ming's fury naturally ignited. Stop fighting. Even Feng Fei couldn't help being angry. Yi Ming, what are you doing? Didn't you say that everything is within your control? We were just supposed to give you some small help. But now, this was your plan. And while Jarishan did cause some unexpected events, you still have to bear most of the responsibility. We shouldn't be discussing blame right now. We need to decide whether or not there really is a way to kill Yan Tian. If not, we can go our separate ways right now and stop wasting time. Feng Fei's tone was icy. Her only goal was Yan Tian. All of them were after him. The existence of a sovereign son was extremely threatening to them. There's only one way left. Summon your subordinates and have their life energy draw out the energy of this tree. Then we can instantly revive the heaven-devouring fiend king, said Yi Ming. Fine. I'll trust you one final time. Don't forget your promise. Otherwise, said Feng Fei coldly. Don't worry. You'll have your share of the divine tree's spirit source, said Yi Ming. Feng Fei took out a formation disc the sky lit up as the formation activated, and many figures began to appear on the altar. Chapter 2519 See God's Trident One disciple after another appeared, all belonging to the divine families. They then stared blankly at their surroundings, not knowing what was going on. The altar was large enough that even as more and more of them arrived, they didn't fill the entire altar. Long Chen, what's going on? At this time, the 8th Heavenly Dragon Legion's warriors also appeared. When they saw Long Chen on the other side and then the corrupt disciples before them, they guessed something. In just a few minutes, an army of almost 3 million disciples of the Divine Families appeared, and more were arriving by the second. Disciples of the Divine Families, hear my orders. Send your life energy into the altar shouted Jarishan. The disciples had yet to understand what was going on. 
but since Jarishan was a sovereign sprout of the divine families, they had no choice but to listen to his orders. With the addition of almost three million disciples, enormous amounts of life energy poured into the altar. As a result, the flames burning on the altar were instantly suppressed and almost extinguished. There's no need to keep focusing on defense. Help Long Chen. Meng Chi immediately placed her hands on Long Chen's back. Her spiritual strength gushed into him. At the same time, her manifestation appeared behind her. Her manifestation was a wonderland filled with immortal mist. Pavilions dotted the land with creeks of running water, and cranes sang their songs in the clouds. Every dragon blood warrior felt like they were unable to distinguish between true and false within this world. Meng Chi had also fully awakened her manifestation. With the dragon blood warriors within her manifestation, their spiritual strength was automatically absorbed by her and sent toward Long Chen. Only Guo Ran stepped out, standing guard. His spiritual strength was so weak that his participation wouldn't make a difference. Hence, he stood on guard for a sneak attack. There was one other person who wasn't helping. Wilde was currently stuffing his face with a bowl that was constantly being replenished with the bodies of the corpse devouring armored spiders. He had used up so much energy that he was starving. Long Chen, they have too many people. We can't last much longer. Transmitted Meng Chi. The addition of the divine families meant that the other side had an ocean's worth of life energy. They almost instantly extinguished the karmic hell flames. Even with Meng Chi and the others joining Long Chen, they were barely able to keep some flames burning. Their spiritual strength was being rapidly consumed just for that. No need to worry. I trust that our reinforcements will arrive quickly, said Long Chen. Just at that moment, countless figures began flying over. They were the experts of the Xuan beasts. Their backs were covered with people wearing the robes of the Martial Heaven Alliance. Senior Apprentice Brother Long Chen. We've come, the Martial Heaven Alliance's disciples roared. On their way here, they had joined up with the experts of the Xuan Beasts. Their speed was greater, allowing them to rush over here as quickly as possible. Just as the Dragonblood Legion was facing off with millions of the Divine Family's experts, they charged into Menki's manifestation without a second thought. As more and more of them joined, spiritual strength poured into Long Chen. The karmic hell flames began to blossom once more. Fairy Nangong, Fairy Bidang, and the Zither Fairy have come. Guo Ran cried out excitedly. The three fairies came together, followed by the disciples of their own factions. Sorry for being late, apologized Nangong Zuayu. The three of them immediately entered Menki's manifestation. Nangong Zuayu and Bidang Rushuang formed hand seals, unleashing their full spiritual strength for Menchi. As for the zither fairy, her fingers danced across the seven-string sea suppressing zither. As her divine music resounded through the air, it revealed the invisible spiritual connection between Long Chen and the flames burning on the altar. As her music played, runes began to flow from the outside, strengthening this connection. Long Chen was surprised. The zither fairy was truly amazing. With her music, she was able to construct a specialized spiritual channel for him. At least half of the spiritual strength he had been sending over was dispersed in the air, but with her help now, none of his spiritual strength was being wasted. More and more experts come. The people of the ancient races arrived, but they didn't immediately join the Xuan beasts. They hesitated. They couldn't tell who to join. The divine families were enemies with Long Chen. If they stood beside the Xuan beasts at this time, it would be publicly going against the divine families. This one decision could end them if they made the wrong choice. However, the ancient races had only come with 20,000 people. The Xuan beasts and the divine families were ignoring them. After a fierce struggle, a portion of the ancient races flew over to Menki's manifestation, choosing to stand beside the Xuan beasts. Divine daughter, what should we do? 300 experts of Pill Valley arrived. Seeing the Pill Fairy standing to the side, they didn't know what to do. The pill fairy frowned. If she said that they should go join the divine families, that would be breaking her agreement with Yan Tian. They had agreed not to further interfere in this battle. She cursed this person for being foolish. Considering that Long Chen was Pill Valley's mortal enemy, did this person even need to ask? Idiot. Get over here. 
She has decided to limit herself along with Yan Tian. She can't give you orders, shouted Jarishan furiously. Those experts looked at the pill fairy. Her expression remained as icy as ever. The leader hesitated but then led Pill Valley's disciples into the camp of the Divine Families. More and more of the Divine Families' disciples were arriving. The Divine Families had entered with 5 million disciples, and now over 4 million of them had come. As for those who hadn't come, either they were too far to sense the transportation formation, or they were dead. As for the Ancient Family Alliance's disciples, it was unknown if they even knew that Di Feng was dead. They immediately joined the Divine Family's side. Where is Ling Shen? Asked Long Chen suddenly. It's strange. She's not here. We saw her on our way here, said someone curiously. Over 500,000 disciples of the Martial Heaven Alliance had arrived by now, but Yi Ling Shen had not appeared. That made people's hearts sink. Such a thing shouldn't happen. However, there was no time to think about it. Long Chen's full focus was on the altar. He could not allow Yi Ming to revive the heaven-devouring fiend king. If it was revived, then those fellows hanging off the tree roots might wake up immediately. Who knew just how many of them were hidden beneath the ground? Ha ha ha, Long Chen. Ah, Long Chen. I finally found you. Suddenly, ear-piercing laughter rang out from above. The six-horned sea serpent appeared along with an endless army of sea demons. The six-horned sea serpent smiled sinisterly. Long Chen. We didn't have time to decide a winner back then. This time, I'll beat you properly. How shameless. You couldn't decide a winner? If you didn't have a death substitute talisman last time, you would no longer exist in this world. Cursed Guo ran disdainfully. This sea demon's face was truly thick to call his fight with Long Chen a draw. The six-horned sea serpent was infuriated. He extended a hand, and a golden trident appeared. This trident was completely different from his old bone trident. This one was completely golden and covered in different runes. Last time, you used your numbers to your advantage. But now, I'll show you the true power of the sea demon race, roared the six-horned sea serpent. Don't bother with that for now. Bring your people over here, shouted Jarishan. Due to Zi Yan's addition, Long Chen's spiritual strength had solidified, and the flames were growing more and more intense. Even the Divine Family's immense life energy was unable to suppress the flames. You guys go over. I'll kill Long Chen. To use the human race's words, I'll pull the carpet from right underneath him. The six-horned sea serpent ordered his subordinates to assist Yi Ming, while he went to attack the Dragonblood Legion. I'll pull your dad's carpet. Cursed Guo Ran. Already attacking. Boom. Guo Ran's sabers exploded, and the trident slammed into his chest creating a huge dent in it. Guo Ran was sent flying. Everyone jumped in shock. Guo Ran's combat power was comparatively high. How could he be unable to receive a single blow from his opponent? What they were unaware of was that Guo Ran's sabers had been damaged in combat against Jarishan. The other factor was just how terrifying the golden trident was. Idiot. This golden sea god trident is a priceless treasure of the sea demon race. I didn't possess the power to control it before, but now I can show all you inferior humans just how superior the sea demon race is. The six-horned sea serpent raised his head and laughed. Golden light erupted from his trident as he charged at the Dragonblood Legion. Everyone's expression changed, including the people on the side of the Divine Families. They cursed him for being brainless and not choosing his words. A giant door bolt slammed toward him. But the six-horned sea serpent merely sneered and swung his trident. Wild was sent flying just like Guo Ran. After fighting for so long and without enough time to recover, he was no longer in his peak condition. Long Chen, come out and fight, shouted the six-horned sea serpent. He was filled with new confidence and wished to wipe away his previous disgrace in front of everyone. Meng Chi and the others' expressions changed. Long Chen could not be allowed to leave at this time. The core fighters also couldn't leave because they needed to send him their spiritual strength. Meng Chi, Chu Yao, and the others had vast spiritual strength, which was essential at this time. Bidang Rushuang, Nangong Zuayu, and the others were also in crucial nodes. If they left, the spiritual strength of the people connecting to them would be severed. Those people would have no choice but to send their spiritual strength directly to Long Chen. 
which was extremely inefficient. Even with how vast Long Chen's spiritual strength was, he couldn't control the spiritual strength of millions of experts without anyone helping him. As a result, there was no one in a position capable of stopping the six-horned sea serpent. They cursed him for coming at the worst time possible. The pill fairy looked at Yan Tian to see him simply standing there. It seemed he had no intention of interfering. Instead, he was looking in a certain direction. Light suddenly flashed. A bone tile smashed toward the back of the six-horned sea serpent. Boom. He swung the golden trident behind him, smashing the bone tile. However, the bone tile did not break, and it sent him staggering forward. Who's there? demanded the six-horned sea serpent. A pillar of light descended from the sky, enveloping him. After that, a giant die manifested in midair, trapping him within. This inferior human is Hu Fang. I'm here to experience the sea god's peerless techniques, the refined, scholarly air of the gambling heavenly Dao. Hu Fang appeared in the air. Chapter 2520 Contemptible A giant die revolved in the air, trapping the six-horned sea serpent within. Divine light descended from the die, creating a strange space around it. The die behind Hu Feng's back had vanished, but it was now replaced by nine dominoes. They were the gambling heavenly Deo's inherited divine item, the heavenly nine tiles. Light floated out of the heavenly nine tiles, constantly transforming into different shapes behind Hu Feng. It was as if they were manifesting the future. Sorry, Brother Long. My heavenly fate die fell into slumber after I repaired it. Without it, I can't run around randomly. However, as soon as it woke up, I rushed over. It's a good thing that I didn't come too late, said Hu Fang. You came at the perfect time. Help me trap him. I'm almost done. Long Chen smiled. Hu Fang really had come at the perfect time. Right now, Long Chen had gathered everyone's spiritual strength. His connection to the karmic hell flames burning on the altar was growing increasingly stronger. In a few more minutes, he would be able to assimilate those flames, forming a complete connection between them and the karmic hell flames still in the primal chaos space. Then he would be able to control them despite not being in the primal chaos space. The six horned sea serpent furiously attacked the spatial walls surrounding him. However, the die would constantly change shape. The void would twist and collapse. He was unable to get any leverage to break through. The heavenly fate die was actually just like the Brahma divine diagram and had its own spatial laws. Once trapped, it was very difficult to escape. Bastard, release me, or I'll exterminate your entire sect, roared the six-horned sea serpent. Being trapped by a little die infuriated him. My entire sect is just me. Go ahead, said Hu Feng indifferently. Every generation of the gambling heavenly Dao only had one person. Bastard. Do you think a little Dai can trap the king of the sea demons? The six-horned sea serpent suddenly released his trident and formed hand seals. After that, his manifestation appeared behind him, and endless sea water gushed out. The Dai quickly began to fill up, but it also expanded as it filled, as expected of a king of the sea demon race. At this rate, one incense stick's worth of time will be my limit, said Hu Fang. He hadn't expected the six-horned sea serpent to be able to find the weakness of the heavenly fate die so quickly. The heavenly fate die space was not limitless. Once it was full, holes would naturally appear, allowing the person trapped inside to escape. The six-horned sea serpent possessed a natural talent in controlling sea water, while his manifestation was an endless space. It was definitely bigger than the space of Hu Feng's heavenly fate die. Release me, and I will not pursue your offense, roared the six-horned sea serpent. An incense stick's worth of time was a short time, but his hatred toward Long Chen meant that he couldn't even wait a few seconds. He wanted to ruin Long Chen's plans at the most crucial time to make Long Chen hate him. That was the only way to satisfy his need for vengeance. Sorry, I owe Long Chen a huge debt. I must stall you. Hu Feng shook his head. He formed hand seals, and the heavenly fate die appeared behind him with the six-horned sea serpent still trapped inside. He then rushed over. Bastard. Stop. Where are you taking me? Roared the six-horned sea serpent. Hu Feng ignored him. He waved to Long Chen and the others before vanishing from sight. 
Only the six-horned sea serpent's row remained in the air for a short time before also fading away. That idiot. Yi Ming snorted disdainfully. That expert of the six-horned sea serpent was too foolish. Despite having such power, he didn't have the brains to use it properly. If they hadn't been using the sea demon race as their most powerful shield at the rear, he would refuse to work together with such an idiot. Not only was the six-horned sea serpent stupid, but he was obstinate too. He wasn't cooperating with them, instead focusing on his own plans. If he had just listened to the arrangements from the start, they wouldn't have been forced into such an awkward state at this time. Now, he had been brought away by Hu Fang, Yi Ming, Jarishan, and the others clenched their teeth furiously. Fortunately, the army of the sea demon race had come. Their spiritual strength was trash, but they had plenty of life energy. Their numbers could not be neglected. Just at this moment, the karmic hell flames on the altar began to change. The scattered flames began to gather together. What's going on? Jarishan shouted. That bastard Long Chen. He's able to control the flames from a distance. Yi Ming was shocked. The altar's formation was actually unable to block Long Chen's spiritual strength. That was already shocking enough. But now Long Chen was controlling the flames through the formation. That was completely unnatural. All their expressions quickly changed as those flames gathered. That was because a flame lotus was slowly forming. Impossible. How can he use a magical art through space? Even Feng Fei's expression changed. Just thinking about Long Chen's world extermination flame lotus gave her a chill. If this lotus exploded here, other than a few of them, everyone else would be dead. According to reason, any magical art would need hand seals, requiring a combination of the body mouth, and will. It also could not be used away from the body. However, despite this principle, the flame lotus had definitely formed, terrifying everyone. Don't be afraid. He definitely won't be able to unleash it with the power of the previous one, shouted Yi Ming. Even so, can your altar block it? Asked Jarishan. Ah, Yi Ming was at a loss for words. If the altar was damaged, everything they had done up to now would be useless. After bragging for so long, you're still just shameless trash. You even wasted so much of our manpower and treated us like dancing monkeys. I'll slaughter you, raged Jarishan. Yi Ming was truly disappointing. Even with so many people helping, even with four million warriors of the divine families, their failure was imminent. Is there no way to save things? Feng Fei stopped Jarishan, trying to maintain her calm. Casting blame was meaningless at this time and it was not just Yi Ming's fault. Long Chen and the others had surprised them with their power. These flames are infected with the heaven-devouring Fiend King's karma. Whoever touches them will lose their life for sure. Not even divine items can touch them. Long Chen is only persevering because he realized this. Yi Ming took a deep breath. Long Chen was truly terrifying. Despite this being his plan, it was now Long Chen who was in charge of things. Fuck. I'm going to start killing them. That'll disturb Long Chen, raged Jarishan. Other than the Dragon Blood Legion, you can't kill anyone else. Have you forgotten the ancient immortal treaty demanded Feng Fei? Jarishan furiously punched the air. Then what? Are we supposed to watch as we fail? Yi Ming and Feng Fei were silent. Based on the ancient immortal treaty, there were certain things that they were not allowed to do. They would be unable to dodge the consequences of such a thing. Long Chen, you had best stop, or you'll regret it for a lifetime. Suddenly, a voice rang out from the sky. Everyone looked up to see two figures. Upon seeing them, killing intent exploded out of Long Chen. The Martial Heaven Alliance's disciples roared furiously. Dong Fang Yuang, if you dare to touch a hair on senior apprentice sister Ling Shen, we'll definitely tear you to pieces. The two figures were Dong Fang Yuang and Yi Ling Shen. Dong Fang Yuang had his hand around Yi Lingxian's throat. Yi Lingxian was pale and covered in wounds. She was bloody, and her body was shaking as if she was enduring some kind of irresistible pain. It seemed as if she wished to control her body and stop the shaking to keep people from worrying, but she was still twitching involuntarily. The normally mighty Yi Lingxian was now like a sheep for the slaughter with Dong Fang Yuang's hand on her throat. The righteous path's expert's eyes turned scarlet. At some point, experts from neutral factions had gathered around the battlefield. 
Even they were infuriated. Dong Fang Yuyang, are you even a person? How can you call yourself a generation's heavenly genius when you use a weak woman to blackmail others? Even the neutral experts were cursing Dong Fang Yuyang. A weak woman? Haha. <laughs> The future leader of the Martial Heaven Alliance counts as a weak woman? I defeated her. So she's my captive now. How I deal with her is up to me. Furthermore, I'm not some brainless fighter. Do you think I'd be a fool and not use the cards that I've captured? Dong Fang Yuyang sneered at them and then turned to Long Chen. Don't you think you should stop now? Or are you going to force me to kill her so you can take the infamy of being a useless fellow who just watches as others die? Dong Fang Yuyang, you're absolutely contemptible a voice suddenly rang out from the midst of the neutral experts. This person drew quite a few gazes. This was the heavenly genius of one of the four everlasting families. The Zeman family's Zeman Shiangsheng. He had once been enemies with Long Chen. But later, for unknown reasons, he had chosen to retreat to the neutral faction. I'm contemptible? Who do you think you are your trash who can't even pick a side? What qualifications do you have to even speak to me? Dong Fang Yuyang sneered at Zeman Shiangsheng before ignoring him. He turned back to Long Chen. I'm ordering you to stop. Did you hear me? Dong Fang Yuyang. Are you in such a rush to die? Long Chen clenched his fists tightly, his voice coming from the cracks between his teeth. His anger had reached a peak. Dong Fang Yuyang suddenly took out a dagger and stabbed it into Yi Lingxian's shoulder. Her body quivered intensely, but she didn't make a sound. Blood flowed out of her mouth. Dong Fang Yuyang, you little fucker. The dragon blood warriors immediately took out their weapons. Killing intent filled the air.